welcome to the Tour Stories podcast. Episode one. Uh, I'm Christian Walker. And I'm Jared Callen. Uh, yeah, so this first one we recorded a couple of weeks ago and uh, with Liz Brasher, who's uh, super sweet, super talented, a lot of fun to hang out with. It was a great conversation. You know, this this was the first one and I feel like it set the tone for what we're trying to do here. Anytime you can start out really strong, it's amazing. And uh, yeah. this one is, is really badass. Uh, yeah, you, you can check out our album. It, uh, it actually aired uh, three days after we recorded this podcast. And uh, it's called Painted Image uh, on uh, Fat Possum Records. It's seriously amazing. And uh, early in the year, uh, we, we'll talk about it a little bit on the podcast. Like we, we had the pleasure of like working with her and doing a music video. So it was really cool to actually get her in the studio here and, and like talk. And she's, she's such a sweet lady. And it, was, it was really fun. And, and my only regret is that we didn't keep rolling um, to where we were just like goofing off. <laughs> talking in the hallway afterwards that was like some of the most fun there's something about being on a podcast where you got like the the red lights going and like all the mic the mics and they kind of feel like you're, you're in that and then when as soon as all that stops and you can like take a breath mm-hmm. it's like oh everybody relaxes and that's when really nice conversation comes out <laughs> yeah yeah you're, you're not you don't feel on the spot anymore there's no like pressure to perform right anyways i hope you like our first episode uh, please follow us on twitter instagram and facebook at Torror Stories. That's T O U R R O R Stories. Please like and subscribe. It helps people find the podcast. And recommend it to your friends. Yes. And your grandma. All right. Well, here we go. Thank you. So you can uh, put all that on. Uh, you can give your um, headphone adjustment there if you need. Me. Yep, the one closest to you, and that you no. Know, so cool, because I'm yeah. deaf. <laughs> so I need to well, turn everyone up. No, it's all good. <clears throat> are you are you already? Oh, baby, we've been rolling. Oh, okay. Oh, are, 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 are you deaf? Because I have uh, I have tinnitus. Do you from, really? From playing music for so long. Oh, I'm yeah. hoping I don't get that. I got it. Uh, I used to uh, have a Mesa Boogie triple rectifier, and I was standing next to it. And I like, uh, like, I like, you know, did my wow, and I leaned my head down into Ooh. the cabinet. And since then, I've had a nice uh, ring. Yeah, they say if your ears ever ring, then you have lost that frequency, whatever that frequency that you're hearing is. Oh, man. oh wow! So, so they say that if you if you vacuum for 15 minutes, you damage your hearing permanently. No shit. So I hope you wear earplugs for 15 minutes. Yeah. I've done it for way longer than 15 minutes Oh, yeah, minutes dude. It takes time. me 15 minutes, you know, to do my living room because <laughs> of my dog. Like, <laughs> right? Because of my hair. I shed so much. <laughs> I didn't know that. <clears throat> do you wear earplugs when you play? No. Uh, yeah, because it's hard to... But because we're just a trio, the mm-hmm. volume isn't as loud as like two guitars, you know, organ over here. But still, it can get pretty loud. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just, I don't want to... It's hard to get into it. Yeah. Like, it, you know, I mean, for me, it's a huge difference. And I'll start, I'll start play a show with earplugs in. And then just like halfway through the first song, I'll just pull them out. Well, and then I can like really feel the music. But yeah. Well, you know, uh, well, I'm not going to put that out there. It's fine. I know, <laughs> I know someone who had in ears in and they went to turn the in ear volume up and it was, it was like screechingly loud. And he got tinnitus because of in ears. Oh, so. no. oh, no way. Yeah. So. I don't know what the right thing is. Where uh, hopefully, I'm, yeah, I <laughs> yeah, know yeah. I should, right? So um, I'm glad that you could come in because you're about to be really busy because your album comes out in like three days. In right? three days, yeah. What's today? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, three days. Wow. Uh, I've been listening to the NPR uh, link. Um, Same here. Which is cool. that's really cool. Like, uh, it's really cool that you got the NPR thing, and um, yeah. the album is great. It's uh, there's a lot of Memphis in there. It sounds it sounds very Memphis. Yeah, and it's funny because I didn't come expecting to make a Memphis record, mm-hmm. but I think I just so perfectly fit in with the city. It ended up being that. And Scott is so Memphis, you know. Scott Bomar is so. It just ended so he, up. He re- he did the whole thing. He produced it. Yeah. Okay, but I, I noticed that you recorded at Electrophonic at Royal and at Arden, right? Yeah. Well, we did like the bulk of everything at Electrophonic and then 
do you guys remember that like snowstorm that hit where everybody was without power a year ago? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was around this time, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we had just finished recording like all the drums, bass, guitar that we needed, and organ. And then that snowstorm hit. Everyone is without power. The studio has no power. And Royal is like, we have horns scheduled to come in and do their parts. And Royal's like the only place that has power. So we're like, boo, can we please come over and do this? He's like, yeah, of course. So Perfect we tracked place. that there. Yeah. And then we did strings at Ardent. Okay. So. Uh, boo is amazing. He uh, is. That room at Royal is I was kind of trying to play a game when I was listening to your album. I was like trying to figure out which studio, <laughs> what was recorded, you know, yeah. like where. Because I was thinking like each song was, you know, different oh. songs were recorded. So I was like, I was like, does this sound like that room at Royal? Um, but no, I mean, those uh, Scott's great. I've known Scott almost 30 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Holy um, shit, that's longer than I've been alive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just, Instant make you feel I just, sorry. I just no, I that's just to show you how strong your bond is. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, and he's uh super talented. It sounds amazing. It's great. Um he's so good at like at analog and also at like just making things sound uh warm and also like retro but in today's context, which mm-hmm. is hard to find. And I didn't know that going into dealing with Scott, you know, cause I didn't know him ahead of time. So it really turned out to be really good. I think. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the album sounds great. Everybody that I've listened to it with lately is, uh, has commented on your guitar tone. Oh really? Like, oh, I love that. It sounds really nice. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. So uh, that's you know, to spread good. that on. Cause that's something that, you know, yeah. cause when you're tinkering with the guitar, you want to make sure it sounds. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Spent so much time. Well, and I was still, I, th- I was still playing a telly primarily at that time and scott ha- scott was bringing out all these amps and one that he brought out which i don't know if you guys know henson the guy who makes amps he's apparently a pharmacist Mm-mm. in town yeah i know that's his last name i don't know what his first name is but he like hand makes these really cool wow. amps yeah wow and they're just called henson amps and scott that's crazy i think has one or two and steve selvage has another one and they swear by them and they sound really good so yeah, we did a combo of things that I can't remember on that album, <laughs> <laughs> but that's good to hear. No, that's cool. So uh, when something like that happens, do they uh, and and you do all these different combinations? Do they, do they log all of that? So if you Hell had, to, if you no. had, so no, all of that's just <laughs> it's so gone. It's, it's like it's like I really like this thing we did on this previous album. I'd like to like recreate something like that and add to it. Like no, to the good wind. Luck. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I think none of us really thought much of it. You know, nobody right. could really foresee what in a year would happen and i don't know what is going to happen beyond that but we were all just like let's make this record let's let's have fun let's get it done and that's what we did but so yeah i can't remember anything maybe scott does but i'm I, sure I no idea. there has to be notes yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah or or everything's <laughs> just done by feel yeah you know? this- that's pretty much how we did it i mean we we jam-packed I came here over a weekend and we recorded 15 songs and that was just like a demo. Mm-hmm. And then I got signed off of that with Fat Possum and then Fat Possum was like, come back for two weeks so we can, so you can take a little bit more time. But those two weeks were like eight hour days, like mm-hmm. nonstop too. So it's all a blur. When, yeah. did you, when did you actually move here? Last September. Okay. So just a little over a year. Oh, so you weren't. I wasn't even here. Yeah. So you weren't living here when mm-hmm. we met. No. Wait, when did we? In February. We ta- we shot the video in February. Almost a year ago. Hmm. I was living here. Okay. Yeah, I was here. Okay. So, so it was the September before that. Yeah. So it's been like a year. And, a year and a few months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. right. Where'd you move from? Atlanta. Atlanta. Hotlanta. Hotlanta. You know, Hot that's mess. A, that's, a, that's a big film industry world now. Yeah, which I wasn't aware of that at the time. (laughs) Really? I was wondering if if the people who live there actually see it, you know, because... I didn't. Stranger Stranger Things and uh, Walking Dead and all that shoots. You know, I actually, I played a show in the town where Walking Dead is filmed, which is a beautiful, gorgeous, like little kind of middle of nowhere town. I don't even remember the name of it now. It's like Sequoia or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Zach Brown 
had a venue, like a restaurant oh, slash cool. venue where you'd play in this loft on top of this bar. Anyways, and in that town, they have like a Walking Dead museum and all these cutouts and stuff. So it's a cool little town if you get a chance That's to go awesome. there. But yeah, no, I never saw any of that. I also lived a little bit outside of the city just because it's such a nightmare dealing with um, traffic there. Wow. So no, I didn't see much of that. I saw a lot of cover bands. That's what was going around like Atlanta, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just like everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I've never, I've never understood that. The, I, I always like feel like when I watch people in cover band, like I have a friend who plays in one of these casino cover bands, and they just oh play. man, they make money. Yeah, yeah. that's the point. They yeah. make money. <laughs> I mean, she yeah. makes a living, but I, yeah. but I'm always like, like as a musician, like I, you know, it's got to hurt a little, it like hurts your soul. Me. It's got to hurt your yeah, soul. Yeah, that's what everybody says. They're soul sucking, you know. Same with those corporate bands. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't pay me enough money to be just a wedding band. Mm-hmm. I would die. I'd rather be homeless on the street. But at the same time, you're making a living playing music. So right. it's like the rub, you yeah, know. It's like, oh. but I don't know. Somebody was telling me the other day there's this thing going around where you do, which is another level to this, is like you're, a, um, you're in a band and you go play, but it's like live karaoke. So I've, you have an entire. So that's in Atlanta. Yeah. So, of so they're, they're starting to do that here. What a crazy oh, no, weird Memphis. thing! Like, and that's kind of soul sucking as as a musician because you're up there going <laughs> and and you're bringing up somebody who probably can't sing. That's a next level. And then, yeah, so they definitely so you're, can. And, and you're trying to play along with these people who are, have no timing and they can't <laughs> sing. And you're like putting on the big smile, like, yeah, please oh leave gosh. a tip. <laughs> How much do you think they make? You, they, they better make a lot because right? you have to know all these songs. Yeah. And you have to be contemporary songs. <sighs> But you know, even that's you know, next level. Another level is oh, God. is like the t- is like touring. Um, uh, there used to be a band that was like the Guns N' Roses cover band that I used to go yes. see. Oh, like uh, yes. Yes. Destruction. yes, they were really good. But I just imagine like every night they're just playing like somebody else's songs, and they were great at it. But yeah. it's like it's got to be. You know, they're like, oh, I'm making a living playing music, but it's not mine. It's not like from my soul. It's, it's Yeah. The only way I can see that working out is if you've got like your own thing going, but you're really good at this tribute band act right. and you like completely take it on. So you do the outfits, you do the makeup, you do the crazy names, you do the whole cheese fest and you live that life. But then you come back and have like your original paradise to still do that's the only way i can really see that working is if you have both to balance it but the uh, the pink floyd cover band i saw them and they were amazing (laughs) (laughs) yeah because they're they're creating all these soundscapes and that's just kind of cool that's cool to to see yeah yeah because it's not really the real guys but you can kind of sit back and close your eyes yeah i won't knock all of it like i know there's a group in nashville that does it and there's another one in atlanta i don't think I don't. I haven't heard of anybody. Well, except for the MDs, they do it where they'll cover a whole album, like a mm-hmm. classic album. Oh, that's cool. But they do it like every month, mm-hmm. and I think that's pretty cool because all those musicians have to like learn these, you know, these great songs that everybody knows, and you can go in and appreciate them in a new way. But I don't want to see that every night. <laughs> no. I definitely don't want to play it every night. No, I do not. <laughs> and then there's the. Uh, have you seen the? There's the Black Sabbath cover band that. It's like McDonald's theme, and they're called Max Sabbath. No, no. Yeah. Are, they, are they dressed like they Grimace dress like the hamburger, like the hamburger and Grimace? Yeah. <laughs> they throw fries at you at the end of the show. <laughs> that's amazing. That's kind of fun. That is funny. See, that's like taking it on. There's, fully. A, there's a gimmick, yeah. and right? you know, yeah, it's totally. like you know it's corny, and you're gonna you know take it to the next level. <laughs> so um, you're about to go on the road again. Yeah. Uh, are you going, you're touring with the zombies again? Yes, which I cannot wait because they're phenomenal. Yeah? like They're phenomenal to watch every night and they're just so humble too. So you're like walking around with these legends and they're not even acting like it. And I'm freaking out because I've loved the zombies forever. But how yeah. many, how many original members is it? Um, so with this tour, it's two, it's Colin and Rod Argent, but the rest of the guys, Tom and, um, Soren, uh, and I can't remember the drummer's name. They're phenomenal as well. What are um, what are their what are zombies crowds like? So they zombies crowds really surprise me because they just love good music. So they're like super attentive the entire time. Like I remember the first show we played with them at the Fillmore in San Francisco. I was like, okay, yeah, we're an opening act. You know, no one's going to be paying attention. It was like from the stage to the back full with everybody's like eyes on us which you're never expecting as an opener you know Mm -hmm. so that was really cool and um 
I mean, the demographic is a little bit older, but every now and then you'll see like younger people who get who the zombies are, which is really cool to see. So yeah, their fans are great. Nice. And how many, I, I mean, you did a tour with them before, like yeah. how many dates did you Five. Do? Five? We okay. just did five on the West Coast. So this is going to be like a little over two weeks, which I'm excited about. And it's Florida and oh, Texas man. and New Orleans in the winter. That's oh, perfect wow. time to go to those places. Yeah. We get I, to go to some beaches. Yeah. I need to, I need to find out when your New Orleans show is. I'm going to come. Yes. Yeah. yeah come. I oh always need gosh, an excuse yes. to go back down to New Orleans. Right. Yeah. Me too. I'm always <laughs> excited when I see it on the itinerary. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the date right now off the top of my head but it's in there the zombies uh have one of my favorite like rock and roll sort of legend stories do you know the story about the is zombie? it the kiss story no it's, okay because that's a whole other one it's the one about the fake zombie yes fake zombies, the man. fake zombies <laughs> oh my gosh which i kept forgetting to talk to them about that because mm-hmm. you've only got five dates you know so it's right. like you're still warming up to one another right on this tour i'm gonna bring up the fake zombies you should well, they might be tired of talking about. They it. might be. Yeah, but there's that thing, you know. It's like it's like if you get somebody in a room and and you and you're acquainted with them, then you can ask those questions. Right. Well, right. I made the mistake. I don't know if it was a mistake or if he thought it was really cool, but I met Billy Gibbons in New York <laughs> on Halloween night, <laughs> and he was a part of the fake zombies thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's what was crazy. But I brought it up, and he, I was like, I want to talk to you about the fake zombies. I had thrown back a little too much. It was Halloween, yeah. Yeah. New York. I just watched him play. I was freaking out that he was talking to me. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, uh, that wasn't really me. That was like some buddies of mine. And just like, oh, really? He brushed it off. It off. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know if I should be circling that, but it's out there. You know, yeah. if, everyone knows. If anybody doesn't know what we're talking about, the zombies had a couple of hits. They had time of the season, which was a huge hit in here in the States. And then they broke up and then somebody put, a band, a fake zombies band out on the road playing those songs. <laughs> there were two. Internet. There were two of them. <laughs> one was from Texas. One was from like Minnesota or yeah. something like that. Um, but the one that was from Texas ended up being ZZ Top. Yes, that's right. Like, that is after, insane. Yeah. That's right. It did morph into, and the craziest thing, it's like everybody knew, okay, this is a British band that had just had this hit song here. Mm-hmm. These guys from Texas are dressed in like full Western attire <laughs> going on stage performing as the zombies. Like who didn't call them on that block? Well, they were with, just waiting for their beards to grow out. Right? With, <laughs> right. with no keyboard player. That's true. Oh, that's weird. That's true. Yeah. Um, and another weird, uh, I, I mean, I think this is true. I think like ZZ Top's proper first show was at, at the Overton Park Shell. Oh, really? really? Yeah. What? That's what you I heard. You know, Billy did tell me that he loved Memphis and that he lived in Memphis for a while. So we talked about that, but well, I, I know I mentioned I'm it. actually working on one of the one of those guy's cousin's house. Anyways, he's like, my cousin, he's, he's in ZZ Top. ZZ Top. Yeah. <laughs> and he's some like good old boy like out in the country, you know. And, he's pro- that's probably yeah. right. Then. Yeah. <laughs> but you know Memphis is like um I mean that's the thing is like uh like everything cool like you can trace the roots back to Memphis. You can. You know? It's wild. And nobody's like, "Hey, look at this." You know, it's like you have to secretly find it out. Mhm. I mean, I like to say, you know, I always like I always say like we were all conceived to an Al Green record. So mm. you know, I know we, that's right. We all have that I know like, that's right. We all have that like Memphis <laughs> Memphis root. Right? <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit more about like you, like your, your tours, like, um, how long, oh how long have you been touring? Um, just for a year now. Yeah. Yeah. Last year was my first year on the road. And so it was really good. <laughs> it was a huge, um, learning curve for me, but mm-hmm. cause I had to do a lot of things that you normally pay other people to do on the road for you, <laughs> like tour manage and. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you were handling the tour. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. You need a manager. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a manager, <laughs> okay. a tour manager. Yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, just, just learning how it works, trying to, as I go. Wow. And it's just you and your bandmates and all your gear in a van. In a van. And you load in all your gear yourself. Do you guys, you guys yep. have a roadie or anybody? Whoa. No, we do not. Uh, thankfully, at a lot of venues, though, there are like stage hands there. But it's, you know, we don't have that much stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's not the end of the world. One day, somebody else will be doing it for <laughs> us. Yeah. 
I mean, that's cool. I mean, you know, it like puts you yeah. like in it, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I always said I wanted, I mean, I've always wanted to know like from the ground up so that I can appreciate anybody who comes in between me and you know what I'm doing now. So when a roadie comes, I'm going to be like, thank you every <laughs> night. <laughs> At least you'll really appreciate it by then. Oh, yeah. You know, imagine these kids who step out, they're 17, and they step out right into a tour bus, and they've got a full, you know. It the, happens every now and it then. It happens a that's lot. How, that's how you Those get, are always the jerks. <laughs> yeah, you're real shitty to your crew. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just act like they're not there. No, I don't. Yeah, you kind of have to, like, um, you kind of have to, like, eat it to really appreciate, like, the life and, you know, to, like, be, like, you know, broke on the road. Oh, yeah. Trying to, you know, worrying about like, are we going to have enough gas money to get from here to there? <laughs> yeah. Can we repair this van right now to get to the next gig? Which is also why they say, you know, it's it's better to, uh, you know, if you did hit it later in life, at least you'll appreciate the money that you get at the time and all that too. So That's you're true. not just going to like, you know, like all these people who become sports stars and they, you know, blow these millions of dollars before they even get a chance yeah. to really like, you know, know what they had. Oh, yeah. No, I'm going to appreciate it when I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's hard to imagine. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't turn it away. You know, everyone says like, you know, money's not, doesn't equal happiness, but you know, I would like it to help try. sometimes. I would like it to sure try. does help. Yeah. It sure does help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and you can always give some of your money away, you know, that'll make you feel a little bit better. Yeah. So like, uh, has any, uh, are there any like stories that stick out like, um, highlight, like horror stories? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, let's like talk a about- legitimate, I have one legitimate horror story. Okay. Let's, uh, <laughs> that, oh man, it's still like even hard to talk about it. This oh, is God. how, yeah, it's, it's horrifying. Wait. This was when we were actually on the road doing the last zombies run. <clears throat> and we're in a 15 passenger van, my van, which I've very fondly named Big Sandy because she's Sandy. sand colored. Yeah. And, um, so it's just us three. In the van, Todd, bass player, driving, Charles, drummer, up front, and I'm on the back bench seat. And we're going up the West Coast. So we're heading from San Francisco to Portland at this point. And some, somewhere in between, there's like mountains or something. And um, from time to time, I'll find like just a really nice Airbnb for us to stay at because it's just three of us. And if I can get like a hike somewhere in or a nice walk or we can get, you know, a nice view that's not like a hotel room, then, you know, that helps me out. So um, that's what I found. I found this Airbnb in the mountains on the West Coast. And I thought, you know, this is going to be really great, relaxing when we wake up. We can take a walk, all these things, because we'll have time to get to the next um, gig. So we're pulling in up around the mountain around like, I don't know, around six o'clock. So the sun is like just starting to slowly set. And we're looking for this house. We've just gone up this two lane mountain road, winding roads. And we've gotten to where the GPS is telling us that we need to go. But all of our phones have just dropped service. So we have no service on the mountain. We're looking for this house. We can't find it. Then we're we're looking back at the photos of the Airbnb and we're like, I think it's that house that's over there. But you had to drive through this gravel driveway in between somebody else's house. Oh, God. Yeah. It's someone's house, and there's like their house is right here on our on my right hand side, and on the left hand side is their huge shed. Um, and all we could see from the mountain road is like a smokestack with like you know chimney smoke coming out of it, and this little blue Honda from like the '80s parked in a garage, uh, not in a garage, in like a carport. Right. So we're like, yeah, we we're gonna have to do this to get to the house. So. We just go for it and we just drive through and we get to the house and the house is nice and we get out and I'm like, well, how are you, how do we unlock this house? Cause I just realized the lady didn't leave any information on how to unlock it. That's really rare. I'm looking back. I don't see anything. And, uh, this is the West coast, mind you. So I'm not where I need to be mentally a hundred percent, but so we pull up and Todd gets out and he's like, I'm just going to go try the door. And he opens the door and it's just open. 
So it, it was really weird. And we walk into the house and the whole house has like pictures of cats, <laughs> <laughs> like just different cats and people with these cats all across the walls. Really odd. And we get inside and it's freezing. Like there's no way for us to turn heat on. We can't figure out this like furnace that they have with all this wood. And I'm walking around outside because I'm like, I want to see what this is about. So I walk to the back and there's like a bunch of little shacks with random rain tarps over them. And I'm like, is this a colony of people that are just hanging out back here? But there's nobody in any of these. And it's a beautiful mountain view, but this is freaking me out. (laughs) So we can't figure out how to turn the heat on. And I'm like, screw this. We're leaving. We're just going to go get a hotel in the middle of downtown. Because if we can't figure out heat and I can't get in touch with her, then this is not going to work out. So we get in the van and we're backing back up and there's now a man standing outside of the shed an older man in a shirt with a white t-shirt with all these stains all over it and a bucket and he's flagging us down and we're like what the hell and and we just all were like gun it just go (laughs) so so yeah so we take off down you know down the gravel we're like kicking up dust behind us like speeding off as fast as we can and we're starting to go down the, the mountain road and we're all just like joking like wouldn't it be funny if we saw that guy coming across us like if he was running through oh, the just mountains again? Just, like, like yeah he pops we up. just saw him again that'd be hilarious right ha 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 and we're just driving and suddenly todd goes he's behind us and charles and i are laughing hysterically we're like ha ha very funny and i turn around and i'm like oh shit it's the blue <laughs> honda and he's flashing lights oh, he's wow. yeah he is on our asses he's like right behind us and we're like what is going on not only does and we're not stopping because i'm like do not stop keep going right <laughs> we don't know where we're going we can't get out of this mountain because we have no service and we don't know the freaking yeah. mountain so we're literally driving around in circles trying to get out of here it was so confusing this guy is relentless he finally comes up next to us and cuts us no off shit a tiny blue Honda cutting <laughs> off a big 15 passenger van. Okay. Cuts us off. Not only does he do that, he gets out of his car, comes to the window. At this point, I'm on the floorboard. I'm like, I'm not sticking around for this. I'm on the ground. I'm freaked out. I'm scared. <laughs> and he comes to the window and Todd, ro- Todd is like very like just neutral, very calm. <laughs> he rolls down the window And he looks at this guy and the guy's like, what the hell were you doing on my property? (laughs) And Todd's like, man, we were just at the Airbnb that we were supposed to get to. And that's why we were, we pulled through and that's what we were staying at. We were supposed to be staying at this Airbnb. And he's like, yeah, well, he's like, oh, okay. Like he didn't realize that we were at the Airbnb. He's like, well, there's a lot of looters that come through here. So I'm just making sure. Todd's like, no, man, we're just, we're heading back. We're heading into town to just go get some food and we'll be right back. And the guy's like, okay, okay. That sounds good. And he gets in his car and he goes back to his house. And we then proceed to spend the next like 10 minutes (laughs) circling around again until we can figure out how to get down from the mountain. But we were all so freaked out because we didn't know yeah. this guy had like a shotgun yeah. what he was going to do you know, <laughs> on the side of the road so we needless to say we did not go back there. I, was about, I was wondering did you no. go back hell no <laughs> he's like he's still sitting there waiting he probably is we'll, well and i contacted the lady because uh, with that i booked the airbnb through and i was like uh you need to know actually i called airbnb to let them know first and then i told her and she's like yeah i'm sorry that was the first time that the Airbnb was going to be used. Oh, I was wondering because I was like, if they're being used as an Airbnb, they'd probably be used to it. But yeah, yeah. Oh. he was not used. He to that. should have been notified, <laughs> especially sh- if you have to go through his, his yard. yard. How weird is that, right? Holy crap! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't good. Um, we did a shoot recently, and um, the producer uh, accidentally put the wrong address <sighs> on the Airbnb, and so sometimes when we go out of town, uh, they'll they'll get us a house, and everybody gets their own room or whatever. Yeah. So the uh, the first guy to get to this place goes up and he goes and the key is supposed to be inside the reef on the door oh so he goes up and, and there's not a reef and he's like looking around and he's you 
know, whatever. And then this truck pulls up and this guy comes out and he pulls a gun. He's like, what the <gasps> fuck are you doing uh, in my yard? Oh, and he's like, no. whoa, 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 man. Here, I'm looking for an Airbnb and obviously I have the wrong house. And he's like, you need to get the fuck out of here. And I'm like, oh, you know, shit. because that sounds like you're lying. It does sound it, like you know, you're lying. It you know, does. Like, or they're like, what the fuck's an Airbnb? Yeah, that's you know? true. So, yeah. And so then instantly everybody's like, do not go to this address. We have oh, the wrong address. Gosh. Like, good work, everybody. That's <laughs> terrifying. Oh, my God. Like, what wow. if you got shot over something He could stupid? have. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> I mean, there's there's a whole world oh of God. there's a whole world of creepy things that can happen through Airbnb that That's you know true. that well it's the same things like my parents keep telling me you don't need to take these Ubers because you don't know who these people are no you more. really don't yeah but you don't know taxi drivers either well you know but they work for that company and and they're kind of based and all that wasn't there an Uber driver somewhere that like killed like, yeah. a bunch of people. Yeah, or was it a passenger that killed the Uber driver? No, I, I read one where a guy gets in, uh, like the, his, this guy and his wife were having an argument or whatever. They get into the Uber car. He gets in the back seat on the passenger side, and she gets in the front seat. And while they're driving, he pulls a gun out and shoots her in the back of the head. <gasps> and then, what? like, the Uber driver, like, freaks out, slams on the brakes, and, like, you know, the dude kind of rolls out into a bush and, like, passes out because he's, like, inebriated. <sighs> and when the cops wake him up, he, he said he didn't even remember what? what's going on. But, he, yeah, the, in, this, in the article. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, imagine that Uber driver going, shit. Oh my god, what the fuck? <laughs> like <laughs> how did, how would you even process life after that? Oh uh, I'd probably do it just yeah. like just slam on the brakes and try to get out as quickly as I can. Wow. I'll never drive Uber again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lift. <laughs> Man, last time I went to New Orleans, that's how I got around everywhere. Really? Uh, I just walk yeah. everywhere there. Yeah. I mean, everything you want to go to is well, pretty much Well, I was going to different And on the road, the like, when you're on tour, you're, like, constantly taking lifts. Because you don't want to, like, take that van and park it everywhere. Yeah, so it's a pain in the ass. We're always taking lifts, and now I'm going to be terrified. <laughs> 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 the share rides, I won't do, though. Yeah, I'm that's like, weird, right? No. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. I don't know about those. You, you, you can, like, get lower rates or whatever. If, and, and if you, you like, share an Uber, if you share an Uber somebody, so, like, you know, they'll have multiple stops, kind of like carpooling. Mm. No, not doing that. That's originally why it started. But right. And it's, no. and it's weird, the Uber Eats thing, where they bring food to your house. Because uh, then, like, these random people who live in your city or not, you know, like, they, oh, well, you know, this dude sure does love McDonald's. <laughs> 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 this dude is way too high to go get his own McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> But then again, it's like, you know, you're at your house and you really want pho bin and you don't want to get at it. You know, do want... they, do they deliver that? Oh yeah. Everything. Oh, I think anything, anything. Oh. I haven't used it yet. I haven't either. But... I have. Oh yeah. But I, didn't, I didn't know that though. You, did you order McDonald's when you were really I, You know, high? I haven't, but I, I saw that, that you that's can get McDonald's and that's pretty ridiculous. That's because, pre- because you're going to spend more on the Uber. Right. And also, you know, those fries aren't that good and you know, they're going to other stops, <laughs> you know, so you got to have them fresh. <laughs> And that's why you got to eat your fries on the way home. That's true. You know. That is true. <laughs> yep. They don't reheat either. Stop. I got to. I can't. I can't. Be, I'm trying to be good. Oh, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm totally. <laughs> me too. <yeah. laughs> this, this is what does me. I have like a few drinks and then I will go through a drive through like. Really? And, oh, yeah. For me, it's like weed. It's like oh. instantly. Ah, la, 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 la. Smoking I the eat, wrong weed, girl. I, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, so you uh you toured sweden right just, yeah in january of last year just just sweden or did you go anywhere else in Europe? just sweden um how, how was that, that? It was yeah. amazing huh? yeah it was awesome um it, that was my first time like traveling to do like outside of the country to do music and my first time traveling to europe so and i was by myself so I was pretty freaked out ahead of time because at this point I had never toured before. But you were just by yourself? Yeah. So they, they hooked Whoa. you up with a band there or were you just doing like solo gigs? So I did solo guitar gigs, really? but I, it, I actually morphed into a band there playing with me because I went um, and there was there's a Swedish band there called uh, Jetbone. Which I call him Jet Boner all the time. (laughs) (laughs) I'm opening for Jet Boner. (laughs) (laughs) But some of their members were backing this guy from Louisiana. His name is Rod Melanson. And he's over there. The whole reason it came about was this guy, Bjorn, who runs this association called Rootsy Music. And they're all about, like, American roots music. He holds, like, a conference where he'll bring like other booking agents from Europe to come and listen to these American artists that aren't well known there yet. So, um, yeah, he brought me over there and Rod was one of the artists over there with Jetbone backing him. So it's crazy because it was only like 
two weeks, I think, of a run or something like that. But um, I just became really good friends with those guys. And Rod lost his voice one day uh, at a show and stopped totally and just got off stage. And everybody's Whoa. like waiting. You know, the room <laughs> is packed and they want him to finish. And we just I got on stage and me and this band just ended up. Um, no doing way. the rest of it That's yeah cool, so it was cool yeah yeah but sweden was great um so uh, let me just back up yeah, yeah back it so up. You, so your first tour <laughs> is sweden cold for, sweden is sweden for two weeks <laughs> yeah uh what's yeah what's I mean, their main language there uh, English and Swedish. I was yeah, wondering. Like, everyone can, speaks can, English. Can, I was yeah. like, can you get around? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, so I was in Stockholm legit alone for two whole days. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of overwhelming. Like one of those days, it was like I was in my hotel room, pitch black darkness. I didn't even leave. I was so depressed. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to get around. It's cold as shit. Then the next day, I was like, I'm getting up and I'm conquering this fucking city. <laughs> so I just like, I figured it out. I got lost around Stockholm and this, I ended up just running into this lady and asking her like how to get around. She's like, hey, do you want to come over for dinner? And I can take you on a tour tomorrow. And I'm oh, like, that's cool. Yeah. We became really good friends. So that's amazing. You know, yeah. It, it's a, it's a beautiful city. Like I, the sw Swedish people are beautiful. They're so and, sweet. Have you, yeah. been, have you been there? I have. I oh, tour, wow. I toured. We toured Sweden. Whoa! <laughs> what band were you in? Uh, this was because uh, everybody talks about you being this like you know legendary I, Memphis no, musician. No, I'm like, no. what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> I was in a couple like the most notable bands. I was in a um, I, of course I was in Pez that uh, is a band that actually Scott Bomar was the first bass player. What? And, and that's how I met him. And <laughs> and Pez started in 1990. Okay. Um, and I joined in '98, and uh, um. But yeah, and the, but then we like a bunch of members of Pez. We were also in a sort of a political thrash band called Bury the Living. Mm. Um, our singer is like a six foot five, uh, tattooed. Uh, uh, he's a he's an actor now. He's like in the Aquaman movie now. He's in Whoa. L.A. But he was like this giant. We were at this band called Bury the Living, and we toured Sweden. We did like we did a bunch of dates in Sweden. We just like like pinballed yeah up and down. Wow. Um, I didn't know that Pat Cox was in was in was a musician as well. Yeah, he was our singer. That's crazy. He's a and, and like a great like front man. I mean, because he's a giant dude. D well, just just for our, our listeners, if you're watching the the uh, show or the Orville, in the first season, he's the uh, the troll in the holodeck. Uh, it's what, hilarious. What, what scene. was his name? Um, Something the troll. No, no, no. It was uh, the. Anyways. I don't know. Yeah, uh, and, and and in the Aquaman, Aquaman movie, he's the guy that that like kind of challenges Aquaman. Yeah, he's in the trailer. He's, he's like, yeah, you, you he's that a, fish boy from the TV. He, he it's the selfie scene. So, so yeah, so he's in both Aquaman and The Dark Knight. Oh, this he, dude's getting around. Wow, yeah, 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 he's yeah. huge. Yeah, he, but uh, anyways, he's, we, done, he's yeah, done all right. For yeah, he did okay. Yeah. Anyways, we were in this hardcore band and we toured. Uh, That's cool. We toured Europe, um, but Sweden was amazing. Like we had like the best time like the people were great so great and touring like like touring europe like like it, they really like appreciate musicians and artists yeah and 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 everywhere you tour in europe it's like they give you a place to stay food they give you an amazing meal yeah really. and they're yeah. like you know open up their homes to you and yeah it's it's really it's a totally different animal than touring in the states. and the, and you're a complete stranger to them and mm -hmm. they're doing all that it's like yep. such a safer country too i think overall you just feel safe because everybody trusts one another mm -hmm. and and don't even get me started and politically it's set up that way to be right. a safer nation right but yeah did you get to um did you get to see like the sun coming up at 3 a.m.? No. Or? It was I winter, so it was like dark. Yeah, and I didn't get to go to the northern part of the country, but all the guys in Jetbone are from the north, so they would tell us about, you know, what it's like over there. I could have stayed for like another week, but ahead of time, I was just mm -hmm. like so overwhelmed with the idea of going alone that I was like, two weeks and I'm done. But of course, as soon as I got there, I'm like, I want to be here longer. So, um, yeah, Stockholm was phenomenal. Malmo, yeah, yeah, was probably my favorite city. Yeah. I wish I had gotten to spend more time there. That's amazing. I played Malmo as well. Well, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they pack rooms there. Like yeah. they don't even know who you are, and they'll just fill a room because they love American music. They're yep. just into it. Yeah, that's and, awesome. And American roots music, especially. Yeah. yeah. So, like, so when you say American roots music, so how do you define your music? What What is your genre? Because I saw it and it said alternative, and I'm like, I don't think this is alternative music. 
<laughs> am, I, am I wrong? I don't know. I don't even, the thing with the genres is they change so often and like every few years they have a different meaning and I don't like genres. I fucking hate genres because mm. to me it's either music is good right. or bad, period. And honestly, I take from so many different influences that maybe you can't hear it on this first album, but surely if I'm blessed enough to have a long life and a catalog oh, of many you will. albums, you will. <laughs> you'll hear a lot of different influences. So I don't know. You know, I get put in Americana categories, in blues categories, That's interesting. in soul. Of course, there's soul. Yeah, 100%. yeah there's definitely soul in there. Garage rock. Yeah. Um, definitely. Sometimes they're even like country and I'm like, Sure, I love country music, but I don't hear. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I, I in that pop country sides because sometimes uh, I, I might be able to see that in some of your music. But yeah. it's funny that you said that uh, that when you went over, you were kind of like you're probably playing stripped down, like you know, just yeah, like, just, just you and a guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, it was interesting because I, I, I'd even. To, uh, said this to Christian. I said, I want to hear her just like with an acoustic guitar. Yeah, yeah. Like, like is there anything like that out there? Or that, no, you know? uh, nothing's out there right now. Um, I do. I've got a a song that I just recorded with um, Pat Sansone of Wilco. He produced it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and it's it's primarily me on an ele on an acoustic guitar. That's how I track the song. We track the song that way. But then we ended up adding a lot of other things. Um, so you can hear the acoustic coming out there then, but um, I've got like some shows that are going to be just acoustic shows coming up too. So if you do one local, I want to see it. I, I do have one coming up local. Can't, awesome. Can't talk about yeah. it now, but I'll let you know. Oh, you can't. Oh, it's an acoustic show. I mean, well, I, it's I, a, it's a so far sounds session. What are y'all familiar with those? No, what is that? They're like secret shows. So you oh. sign up for so far and, I'm talking about it because I don't think this will be out by the time it's it it okay. Won't. Yeah. Anyways, I think we'll be fine. I don't know when. It it's okay. Be. No, it's okay. It'll be fine. It may be soon, but it may be later. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, come to the so far show. <laughs> no, yeah, it's like a I don't really know that much about it, but I know that they do really cool video sessions. So yeah. it's like a a secret session. You don't know who the artist is, but you show up to the show. And, and is it in acoustic. the same venue every time or do they like no. change the venue? It changed oh, the venue awesome. and the settings. It's very intimate. That's fun. When, when, it I, is. when I was in Baton Rouge, they do that, but like with house parties and like, uh, there's all these like venues, like these like empty houses that are all around this like city and everyone down there kind of walks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like people just like coming out of nowhere. And then, like, uh, you just go in, and there's like this random house party, wow. and, and it's like all these bands. That's playing. cool. It's kind of like you're in a movie. That's really cool. And then, like, uh, yeah, so it's it's just like, the, and and that would move, you know. So they they throw yeah. it around the town. It's a good idea. Yeah, it is a good idea, and they do these like internationally, so it's not just here. It's in like every major city and and even like minor cities um, across the whole country. Like I've wow. seen a lot done in in Mexico and. Yeah, you discover a lot of really cool underground artists and you get to see them in a more stripped down environment. So, yeah, that's uh, that's not going to be until March. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll this will be out before then. Yes, <laughs> this will definitely be out. Cool. Yeah. Have you played anywhere else besides Sweden and the States? Anywhere else outside of the States? No. No. Uh, no, but this year I'll probably, probably be touring um, all of Europe. Hopefully. So, definitely Spain. Yeah, so Sweden's so. like the... That's the country, like that's the European country to go for. That's that's the like like that's where you would want to go first as 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 a tour. No, all I mean all, all of it's just it. interesting that all both of you guys went there. I found like Europe. It, it's crazy that like there's just something about the way people in Europe appreciate music. I mean, it's the same as the way people in Europe appreciate. Like everything, food, like, sports, exactly. Life. But really, in yeah. blues, like blues people in Memphis, they keep telling me that they'll go to Europe oh, and that's, oh, that's where they make their money. Oh, they're superstars there. Yeah, they're, oh, they're, yeah. John Bryant, are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. Sold oh, out oh, shows God, across the awesome. board in France. Oh, he's. I mean, the video, the uh, the video okay. we did with him is amazing. I know, I was there. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what it was. That's, so much fun. That's it funny was. in that in that video series. You're like the Easter egg because like there's <laughs> there, you're in three of them. Oh my god! But gosh. you gotta like that's you, right because I was at the Marcella with Spooner. Oh, that's right. Yes. I forgot about that. Yeah. If, if you go to if you go to YouTube and you type in "I listen to Memphis," uh, there is a uh, tw I think it's how is it twelve. 12 videos. There's 12 yeah. videos we did last year of, of local Memphis artists in kind of like really quintessential Memphis locations. But what's really neat about them is they're all live. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, 
quote unquote. Yeah. yeah. No. I, I mean, mean, they're 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 cut like music videos, but but and we would do like three or four or five takes, and then take the best take, and then cut all the the video together. So it, it's kind of like somewhat live, but it's really neat because it kind of captures the the feeling and the sound of of the location. They're so yeah. cool too. It just you guys did a great job at capturing the diversity of music in the city, which is pretty hard to do. There's there's so much, and and you know we're hoping to do a season two because I hope just to you do. A season two. Please do. Well, I, I I'll mean, we show want... up in all those too. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so badass. <laughs> <clears throat> but that's you know, and that's and and I mean, you can't. We can't even scratch the surface. And it, it was so for me. It was amazing because I spent five years in New Orleans, and I and I come back and I I sort of got that gig just immediately coming back. Oh, that was right after you came back. It was right. It was when his I first thing back. you did. We were all like, "How did you do this?" Wow. Oh, I know. There was a lot of you know everybody in Memphis. There's there's such little like film work, and everybody's sort of fighting. And I know there yeah. were there were a, I I know, I heard about people grumbling like, "How did he get this job?" You know, like I'm just <laughs> you I'm haven't even here. been here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was great to like come back, at, you know, and be able to craft this love letter to Memphis and and. And, uh, That's and, a good way of saying it. And really, like, because, I mean, here's the thing. It's like people are hung up on, you know, Memphis, like the past. You know, people are hung up on Elvis yeah. and, 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 and Al Green. But, like, there's never there's never stopped being amazing music here. Right. And there's something about this place that makes... I, I mean, I think it, it has a lot to do with like you know the I mean everybody here is like poor, but everybody here plays. Yeah, um, everybody, yeah. everybody plays. That's yeah, true. so <laughs> even like, where I started. <laughs> so being a musician from here and like playing around locally, it can kind of be a bummer because like you know ten twenty people show up it's to a your bummer. show. Yeah, um, straight. No, up. what's the bummer is is like you, you're pushing right, and then you're trying to you're playing these local shows. This is my experience, and uh, like the, there's a bigger band that plays before you, and then mm-hmm. their and their entire crowd leaves, mm-hmm. uh, and then you're there with the dwindling people. It's like it's like they don't want to support everybody, which is sure. interesting That's when you true. say about going to Sweden. Everybody's just showing up because they want to yeah, hear music. Period. They don't mm-hmm. care who you are. Right. Memphis, I think, is spoiled, mm-hmm. and so people don't come out to shows. You know, like I, I went to see JD McPherson's Christmas album. Um, not too long ago, and it was at that new venue inside of Minglewood, the 1880 Lounge or whatever it's called. 1884, yeah. 1884, yeah, whatever it's called. And not the small one, but the medium. Well, there's a new one now that's that's outside that, too. There's a new bar. There's a new bar. It's called the B-Side. Okay, that's the little one. It's the other one. Yeah, the 1884 Lounge. 1884, yeah, which is a little bit bigger. Right. So I went in there, and I'm like, I walked in, and I'm like, yeah, this is the perfect size. It's going to be great, because it could, what, maybe... Maybe hold 300, 200. Yeah, if you maybe. take all the chairs, sometimes yeah. they, they add chairs they for chairs. smaller stuff. But if you pull all the chairs and make it GA, you could, you could pack in. Yeah. The last people. time I saw JD McPherson, he sold out at the Earl in Atlanta, which holds just as many people. And I'm standing there and I'm like, there's only like 40 to maybe 50 people in here. That's crazy. What the hell, Memphis? And this is good music that Memphis should love, you mm-hmm. know? But. Um, yeah, I just, I think Memphis is really spoiled in how much good music has come out of here and also how many bands, cause for, for a small town or a smaller town, there's so many acts in this one town on any oh, given yeah. night playing mm-hmm. and they're all playing original music, which is so cool to see. Yeah. So I don't know, hopefully but, something switches. But I, I think also uh, not as, uh, as, you know, spoiled, but also I mean, I think everyone's kind of broke here, and oh, that's true. And to go out, I, yeah. I mean, I, you know, yeah. I could be wrong. No, I think you're right. I think people are like really particular about what they, what they're going to spend ten, ten to twenty bucks on, because mm-hmm. they're also got to possibly pay to park, and then that's you know, uh, you, they're drinking money for the night. That's so. right. Yeah. It's a it's a tough city for like touring bands from out of town. Like yes, people, it is, and it's crazy because it's such a like halfway point in the country, but people like don't like want to come here because it, it's such a it's so hit or miss. It's the same with New Orleans too. New Orleans is tough. I mean, so I, tough. I, I lived there five years, and I had I would have friends come through town that wanted to play and wanted me to book their shows, and it was impossible to book a show because. Wow. Um, you know, for one thing, stuff gets books m- month in a- months in advance. But uh, another thing, like, there's just a million cool things going on. Yeah, all so, night long, literally so, all night long. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. But it's such a be- it's a beautiful town. Right? It really is. When I played New Orleans, oh my gosh, you could add this to a fucking horror story. <laughs> where, did, uh, where did you play? The House of Blues. Okay. Which I'll actually be playing again with the zombies. Okay. But when we played it, only like three people were there to watch us. Oh no shit. What? Yeah. Does that affect was, the way you play? Or like, yes. you know, so so you're just hundred like... percent. Yeah, because it's like discouraging. It's like fuck, I'm just up here doing a rehearsal, you know, basically. <laughs> But I'm assuming with the zombies, it'll be it'll be packed. I know it will be, right. so it'll be a much better experience. But this was also at the same time that the jazz festival was oh. happening. Oh, man. People were done with music yes. at this point. So, yeah. Because they were watching, like, Bruce Springsteen yeah, earlier. Yeah, exactly, or exactly. So, yeah, we just we played our set. We got off there, and we just found, like, other cool shows to go watch all night long. This was last year? Yeah. They were rocking to Dr. John, man. So <laughs> yeah, right. It's last year, so it would be in the, in Some, the spring. Yeah, spring. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm def- I'm going to come down yeah, and, come, and watch come. you play with the zombies for sure. Was, oh, That'd we'll have badass. so much fun because be- I don't know that much about New Orleans. Oh. But you do. You're going to be my guy. Oh. Yes. oh, this is. This is going to be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> this will be great this will be great i love it it's my it's my it's my second home if awesome I could, if i could have a home there and a home here and just split my time yeah you mean when you have your home there when home, when, yeah, that's right. when soon yes when that's right because <laughs> yeah, you know memphis like i love new orleans there's a, a million things to do it's it's so beautiful um but like the like memphis people uh Memphis people like form really strong bonds and and when you need when you're like down and out and you need people like like Memphis people will be there and have your back sounds like there's a story no 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 it's just I I, like this is my feeling in general like because people in New Orleans are like like everybody's great like I have some good friends there but like you know nobody like you know if you're down and out and and like Memphis people are like what do you need yeah here's a shirt off my back I have noticed that what's up yeah this, I mean, this is the first town that, because mind you, I lived in Chicago and Atlanta before right. I lived in Memphis. This is the first town that was like arms wide open. You're a part of us. Yeah. Like, we'll take you in. What brought you to Memphis? To re- recording that album with Scott. So that, I, that made you move here? Yeah. I recorded it with him. And Scott at the time was the president of the Grammy Association. And so he took us to like a few different like events. So we got to meet some people already in town connected with the music industry. And he was also just taking us to all these different restaurants where he knew the chefs or he knew people just hanging out and sitting around. So I was just watching all these interactions and meeting so many people in like this two week period. And it just made me fall in love with this town from, you know, the way the town looks to the way it's like raw to the way that there's a ton of people in need and um, to the way that the music community seemed really unified to me or at least very communal. Like they all they all know one another. So, um, yeah. And as soon as like they heard I was making this record with Scott, they're like, cool, we want to hear it. But genuinely, people wanted to hear it It wasn't like, yeah, I want to hear that record. It's like, no, people are actually like they want to hear a song off this record, you know? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, all those things drove me here and the river, like, yeah. you know, being at, in a city where there's water that flows through it is very unique as well. I think there's, I don't know. I feel like there's like just this energy in this city and I, I think it's going to explode in the next few years, especially musically. That's interesting. I've lived here most of my life. Um, Except for a mild stint in Florida, uh, but it's, oh it's, gosh, it's, yeah, that's where I went to film school. <laughs> oh, okay. but um, but that but that interesting about the river, yeah, and I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah it's kind of it kind of it kind of identifies with the city. It does. I mean, the city wouldn't have the name it does without that river. You know, it's named right. after an Egyptian city on the Nile, so right. everything comes from the river. You know, and that's what that's why the city was formed because trades were easier to get through. And New Orleans has that same vibe, you know, because mm-hmm. you had to go up. I was from surrounded New by water down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, New, or- New Orleans was like, uh, you know, the, the feel of New Orleans was, um, you know, it was at one time, like pre-Civil War, it was the third biggest city in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And so oh, if, really? you want, if you wanted to go anywhere in the world and you were in the U.S., you would take a riverboat down to New Orleans and then sail to everywhere. Oh, is that right? So that yeah. was that was the port to the rest yeah. of the it world. It was the port to the world. So, so that's why you wouldn't New- go to New. Uh, I, that's interesting. Yeah. 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 So New Orleans has this huge. Um, you know, Caribbean influence yeah. and oh, yeah. African influence. French. And yeah, the, you know, of course the French yeah. and the Spanish. 
Um, and that's like kind of what, what makes it so beautiful and it. And it still carries that. It's very, it's the most European of all. It is. American I love it. City. It's like I going s- to Europe in, in America. Yeah. I went to New Orleans for the first time, um, for my birthday last year in December. And as soon as we got there, I was like, this looks like what I would expect Europe to look like. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. As exactly. The architecture. And I'm so thankful for cities like that. And Memphis has a lot of, a lot of that too. Although there are some, you know, knocking down of buildings and stuff, but I'm so thankful for cities that keep that architecture because we're not going to see it. I don't think in like, you know, maybe like 50 years from now, 40, 30 years, it's just all going to get knocked down. Memphis tore down a lot. And, (sighs) and it's, um, cause I like, it's kind of an interest of mine is like, uh, you know, architectural history. And, and, um, and there was a, there was a ton of like really beautiful stuff that Memphis tore down. Mm -hmm. Like Memphis really could have been like new Orleans had it had the foresight, but it also didn't have the money. Memphis is a really poor city. It is. And, um, and, you know, things fall into disrepair and it just becomes easier to tear them down. And, and there know. should be a law against that. Well, I that's, think. and, and, and that's what it is in New Orleans. Like if you want to build something in New Orleans that's new, you have to go by this like strict guideline of like, it has to look in the style. Good. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Cause I, I can't stand, I can't stand pulling into Nashville. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> as far as, you know, from an architectural perspective and seeing all these random new condos and new apartment buildings in these little suburbs or little towns that are like obviously just little homes. And you've got these brand new modern condos right. going up in between them. It looks ridiculous. Yeah. But Nashville's blown up so hard that I think like people are. Like I'm, I'm afraid that Memphis is is gonna blow Me up. Me too. Because everyone knows how like cheap it is to live here. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it's and like, you're spreading it out the word right there. <laughs> oh. It's not cheap to <laughs> Wait, live it's here. Not, yeah, it's, it's, it's very terrible. expensive to live here. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. Well, we need a little bit of that coming in though. Yeah. I, Memphis I agree. could use some some of that, but not too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when uh, I want to go back to you talked about um like recording with Scott, like how did you and Scott find each other. So I, um, I was looking for producers that had a really good knowledge of music in the past, recorded music in the past, particularly like soul music. Mm. And, um, who were also like, who were able to work on analog machines and, um, transfer that into the modern day. And the Don Bryant stuff had just come out. And I listened to it and I was like, this is really cool because, you know, obviously this producer has a handle on how to best record this legacy artist and make it sound so, so good, but also make it fit in with today because I'm obsessed with the past. I'm a huge like music history nerd. So, um, so yeah, I just like out of the blue shot Scott an email. And was like, hey, you know, I want to make a demo. I at this point, I had actually reached a breaking point where I had been working for three years with a really horrible producer. And I reached a breaking point where I was like, I'm done with this dude. I'm done spending money and time and energy going nowhere, just spinning my wheels. And it's time for me to like just really fucking do it. And um, and Scott was like, yeah, I'd love to work with you. I sent him some demos and he's like, I think this would be really great. And we talked on the phone. It it felt like we had known each other for a really long time. You know, Scott, he's just like a really cool, friendly guy. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So I came with my trio from Atlanta, Todd and a drummer named, named Lee. And we came up and like I said, like I didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just, I'm going to put every last dime that I have on this demo and hope that it gets me somewhere. Cause at this point I'm like broke, broke. And you were cutting it on analog. Um, w- no, we didn't, but okay. we had the option to do that. So I was more so concerned that he could capture like a retro sound right. in a modern context. So, um, so yeah, we had talked about it and discussed it and financially it just made more sense to just do it digitally. Well, so, yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah. Um, 
and we recorded these 15 songs in like two days and oh yeah that's cooking yeah it's cooking <laughs> <Holy shit>. yeah <laughs> <laughs> you and, really knew what you wanted right well sort of i knew i had a lot of songs and we were like well rehearsed going in there um but yes yeah, got called up his his friend bruce watson from fat possum and he came in and he listened and Pretty much the next day we were at Central Barbecue and he was telling me, you know, what the the offer was going to be like wow. that the label was going to make to me. So so then I, I got to come back and make a legit record uh, and not be broke doing that. But, mm-hmm. you know, was that record analog? That's painted image that, um, and that was, the record that's out now. It's digital. It's digital. Yeah, it is digital as well. I just wonder because as do people still d- do analog. I know that yeah. Steve oh. Albini like well, does everything oh, analog. It's, it's like my, is it still happening? My EP Outcast the the four songs um, on there are actually done analog, and that was done at Bruce's studio at Delta Sonic here in town. That's cool. Yeah, it's old school. So, but you know it. It varies. Like I can't hear minute differences, but sometimes you can. You can hear a warmth. You can hear a difference really? in, in the recording. But at the end of the day, it's like sometimes you just have to adjust to what it is. I mean, all the you know, I, I think it's still most of the major studios in town still record. I, I don't know if Scott has a analog setup. He does. Uh, okay. Yeah, and he um, and he thinks it's super important. And it's true. He thinks it's really important for anybody coming up in the engineer or producer role to know how to work a tape machine yeah. and to edit tape. So yeah, if there weren't time barriers, absolutely. We would do it. I think completely analog. Cause I love that. But. Oh yeah. It's, it's a, it's a completely different animal. Even if you're going to go in and punch in or, or just, oh, you know, yeah. just to go in and do things. I, a few years ago, I went up to electrical audio and, and stall and did this. I was fil- filming a band recording with Steve Albini and I just took that, experience and asked him all these crazy questions and while he was like doing things and I just had a camera on he's like okay now explain to me what you're doing now you know it's like, yeah, yeah. Sh- show me what you're doing and like right he, <laughs> that's what I want to learn oh it's amazing actually yeah. like cut it, cutting tape and yeah. Like doing, like, yeah and I was like I want to learn how to do that every yeah. time he would write some on something and like throw in the trash I'd pick it up and, and stick it in my pocket <laughs> oh, yeah well I mean he's I mean he's he's the best <laughs> but I can I came up in in um I studied um, audio engineering and at one point wanted to be an audio engineer. Wow. Kinda, yeah. And kind of just, I, I I don't feel like I have the patience for that. <laughs> I, I recorded a couple of, there's some, there's some like uh, records that I, I engineered out there. Oh, that's you cool. Know, in the early two thousands, but I just didn't have the, I don't know the patience for it. You know, it um, does take a lot of patience. I don't know, man. True. I enjoy it. I think it's cool. It, it's it cool. Is cool. I like being a part of the process. Mm-hmm. But I mean, all the great. I, I mean, all the really good studios around town. I mean, they all they all have uh, analog. Um, you know, Ardent and Royal oh, yeah. and American yeah. and um, Ardent's going through a big overhaul right now. Uh, are they? Keith, Keith Sykes took over, and he is. Um, He's going in and like shaking things up, man. He's like uh, updating all their systems, making them like even more state of the art than they even were. Oh, I didn't know like, that. Yeah, like uh, they, it, the studio is way more efficient. They won't even let you smoke in the studio anymore. Oh, <laughs> like it's, it's they're, they're getting like crazy hardcore. Like he's he's cleaning up. Go they're, to the atrium. Yeah, yeah. They, they've uh, they, they're adding on the back. They're mm-hmm. like yeah. They're, they're they're doing badass things over there. Mm-hmm. I haven't been there in a while. Yeah, you should you should go. Uh, you should go mm-hmm. talk to Keith and give him uh, give you a tour. Of the yeah, new I don't studio. know Keith. I'll, I'll introduce you. Yeah, please do. And of course, I love Ardent. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. All the studios in. Town I mean, and of course, uh, Matt Rossbang is fucking killing it which i i recorded a song with him oh wow amazon we did this christmas song together and it was so phenomenal working with him at sam phillips oh my god i love sam phillips oh that's so cool (laughs) it's such a cool place so cool right and i got to record at sun too i forgot about that oh that's beautiful yeah um Sam Phillips just blows my mind. Have you been to his office upstairs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's like you stepped into Mad Men. You know, yes. it's, it's like at the red shag carpet. And I'm like, this place looks amazing. Okay, so I was there again during Ameripolitan, the Ameripolitan Awards Festival, whatever they call it. And it's like all the rockabilly acts. Uh, this is like their time to shine. So Dale Watson puts it on every year. And he's, he used to be in Austin. He's amazing yeah he is but now he's doing it at like the new guest house at graceland so that's that's where i went and i saw that for the first time and i watched all these acts and then they had like an after party on beale street and then there was another party at sam phillips 
And I show up to Sam Phillips and I'm just like in black, like always in a leather jacket. And I'm looking around. All these people are dressed like they're from 1950s, oh, 1960s, no early 60s. So it's like you step back in. Yeah, there. exactly. At the office, That's upstairs amazing. in the lounge. It was so perfect for that studio. It was so great. It was a fun night. And but I didn't fit in, you know. I shot a commercial there <laughs> once. Um, and what we did was we took that office and we made it kind of feel like it was set in a time. And then we put a, a big green screen outside the window there, which is actually just on the top of the roof. Yeah. And we made it look like that you were in New York City. Oh, cool. Shooting at the windows. But I sat at his desk and I looked under the desk and I pulled out a master tape. It was just sitting there of John Prine. Oh and I was gosh. like, why is this just sitting here under this desk? Is and it the new record? No, this was like, it's ancient. Old. Old. Oh, wow. And then like, and then, and then like I was walking around. I guess this is before they cleaned it up because mm-hmm. there, there was like a hallway. Yeah. How long ago was this? This was like four or five years ago. Yeah. They've done some. Because they won't let you take pictures in the no. office anymore. Oh, I've got pictures. No, I, was, I was snapping photos but the whole time I was in do. there. But uh, I, I'll show yeah. them to you. But anyways, and then and then I was walking down this like hallway because like it's kind of like, like a little a little L shape up there. And there were all these master tapes just stacked in the hallway along the wall. Oh, and I, wow. And I, and I was like, this is nuts. Yeah. I was like, there could be anything in here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously. So yeah. Wow. Very very cool. What what commercial was it? Um, it was for um, I think it was for Baptist Health, and they were like you know they were, you know uh, it was like an old doctor's office of the fifties. They're saying you know they, oh. they were trying to show you know how things have changed. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So that's they, a, so yeah, that there was like a place to do that yeah. Well, they, yeah. So now you you can't take pictures in there. Really? Uh, yeah, you can't take pictures in the office, and you can't take or the pictures. Bar. In the why well, I, I was allowed to take pictures in the bar, but I couldn't take pictures in the echo chamber. Yeah, well, there's three. Why? Do you know that? No, there's two secret echo. Look at no this. Shit. We're revealing <laughs> Memphis secrets. No, that's cool. Right I, didn't, I didn't know that. There's the one echo chamber that Matt took us through, which has that green light green. and the bucket underneath yes. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like the slanted roof, yeah. which is so cool. Right. But there's two other ones, I think, that nobody talks about that you have to crawl oh, that's to get awesome. to. Oh yeah, I haven't seen them, but I've heard about them. Well, I was, but we were looking to try to shoot a one of those Beale Street Caravan videos yeah. in there, and um, you know, and it's just, I mean, you're in the in the main cutting room, and it's like Jerry Lee Lewis played that piano, yeah, you know, like <laughs> he yeah. spit on this floor, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a, I mean. That that yeah. <laughs> that room to me still is like the best sounding live room. Oh yeah, when yeah. you record in there together, I've never heard something like that. Yeah, ever like just straight you playing through the headphones. It's like, is this what we sound like? We sound really fucking. We good. sound badass, don't we? <laughs> yeah. We're awesome. <laughs> and I swear, I think it has a lot to do with the echo chamber that you're coming out of and coming back into. That's so it's cool. Like, oh, sure. Just because it's, it's real. Sound. Yeah, it's because it's exactly, real. Exactly. That's why it sounds so badass. And it it is state of the art. Like Sam Phillips designed that how he wanted it to be, yeah, and it right. sounds so it's fucking built as good. a studio, right? Yeah. It wasn't just yeah. it was like not like you just took it over and made right. it a studio. Exactly. Yeah, when, when he when he made all the all of his money. You know, and and after he, you know, he like got to build his like dream studio and this was like 1958, 1959. So he designed this echo chamber and it was cool. When I, I, when I got to go there, um, Matt was recording the new Lucero record. Oh, cool. And, um, when he showed me the echo chamber, he was, um, he was taking the kick drum. There's a, there's a speaker in the corner of the echo chamber Mm -hmm. and he was running the (laughs) kick drum and then, and then there was a mic in the middle of the room. So he's like running the kick drum and like getting like the actual, instead of like putting like, you know, some kind of computer. No, it's real. Yeah. It's real. And, yeah. uh, that's, I, that's you know, and I, I just, you know, people, I just don't think people appreciate that. They don't. Know? And, but that's why everything he does sounds so good. Yeah. You know, and that's why he's phenomenal to me in that he cherishes so much of, music history Mm -hmm. but he's such an innovator right now yeah and he's presenting things to people in a way that they're like hmm this is real music i can like real music again and they're eating it up because it sounds so fucking good and he's also so fast yeah at what he does like i love that there was somebody else working at the same pace as me Mm -hmm. in a room because i'm just like a little like lightning bug (laughs) you know from here to there 
and he's he's fast. He he knows exactly what he's trying to get and how to get those sounds, That's and it's awesome. it's pretty incredible. Memphis and, is so lucky to have him, and he's and he's super sweet, and so you, sweet. And you know, like that studio. I, I mean, from what I the story that I heard was that like there was nothing going on there, and nothing. it was like I mean, there was just like boxes stacked up and whatever. And basically, I don't know how it worked out that he was able to come in. Yeah. But I mean, now, like, uh, so Matt's won several Grammys um, for, like, the Jason Isbell records. And now it's like everybody's coming to The John Prine, the new John Prine record he did. Margo Price. Margo Price, yeah. yeah. So he's killing it. He is. He's killing it. This is another Memphian. Yeah. I I know. I'm so excited to be in this town with so many phenomenal artists. Yeah. He's great. So I need more wine. Yeah. <laughs> what are we gonna say? Just so you know, we're at an hour and nine minutes. What? <laughs> yeah. This is a good combo right here. <laughs> hey, we, we try to we try to aim for the hour, uh, and and we hit it. So does anybody That's you good. need more? Yeah. Need more just of this? a little bit. Okay. Okay. Um. You know. That's I, good. Okay. Thank you. I don't have to drive, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. If I if I fall down, I'm almost in my bed. T- t- uh, <laughs> tilt your mic up a little bit for me. Like oh, that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There you go. So, um, you know, back to the road. Um, for me, you know, like the story that you told about like the guy, the Airbnb, the Airbnb story. <laughs> for gosh. me, it was like the the great thing about the road and the thing about touring is that I miss is that you will have one night you'll have the worst night of your life and the next night you'll have the best night of your life. And they're, they're oftentimes back to back. <laughs> yeah. So what about like, what, like to tell us about something you so know, amazing. I had like, I had like the worst night and the best night together. Oh, nice. <laughs> In Minneapolis. I played at first Avenue. Mm. Yeah. But this was like whatever they, I think that's what it's called. The small room. Seventh street. Seventh entry. street entry. Yes, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> so, you know, we were all, I was so pumped, so excited because you hear so much about historic bands. I mean, the big room, the big room was where, where purple, purple, purple rain, rain was no recorded. Yeah. yeah. And, and purple rain was recorded live yeah. and edited down. I'm sorry. That's right. That. You're right. So I'm like, you know, of course I'm freaking out. Like, this is going to be phenomenal. I can't wait to play this. And we're on the road. Um, this is the same spring tour as that New Orleans show. Mm-hmm. We're on the road with this band called Red Wanting Blue out of Ohio. And we're opening for them. And this is a three-month tour. My first U.S. tour Oof. is that long. Wow. So, uh, in. yeah, exactly. So we're in Minneapolis and... I had uh, an interview scheduled before the show with some other people. It was a a podcast interview as well. And so I go and, you know, we do our sound check and I go and I meet them for like a dinner or whatever. And we do it. And I'm like, okay, I got to go back to the show (laughs) to actually play. So I, I get back to the venue and there's this security guard at the front. And I, I tell him who I am. I'm like, I just need to get in, you know, get to the green room and, play the show he's like you cannot come in here without showing your id oh god yes this this is what i'm dealing with <laughs> you already know I where already this is know gonna where go it's going. i'm like okay well uh i'll show you my id but i'm literally the only female <laughs> on the whole night listed that's playing so that's me liz brazier but yeah here's my id i'm 21 to to show you that i'm 21 and up um uh, and so they check my ID and he's like, okay, now I need to see your hands so I can put X's on them. Okay. I'm like, no, you're not going to put two fucking big X's on my hand so that I get up on stage and I'm playing guitar and now there's huge oh, X's yeah. on my fucking hand. I said to him, no, no, give me, you know, if you want to give me a wristband that I can tie to like my waist, you know, to my jean, my belt loop, I can do that. But no, you're not going to put X's on my hands. Then I have to put a wristband on your wrist. I was like, you're not going to put a wristband on my wrist because I, you've already checked my ID. Just let me in. I'm playing tonight. Right. At this point, it turns into a huge fiasco where he's not letting me in through the doors. So finally, I'm like, you know what? Just put the fucking X's on my hand because I'm going to go to the bathroom and wash them off. Damn Duh. Right. Okay. So he puts them on my hands and I go in and I wash them off and I go to the green room. Yeah. <laughs> And this guy did not like the fact that I confronted him like that. 
Oh, how dare you? So he was after me. He like moved from his post outside to follow into the venue to make sure that I wasn't doing anything like washing the X's off my hands, but I sure enough did. <laughs> so I come up from the green room. It's time for us to get on stage. And I'm pissed that I just had to deal with this for 15 fucking minutes. And I start walking towards the stage and he's like, I don't see X's on your hands. Oh God. I'm like, I washed them off because I'm not going to wear X's on my hands. I told you that already. And it's time for me to get up on stage. At this point, we're arguing and all the audience is watching (laughs) from the side of the stage. (laughs) And my band is like, what the fuck is going on? Mm. Mind you, nobody in any band had to have X's or wristbands put on their wrist. That's why I was pissed. Exactly. That's why I was like, fuck no, you're not targeting me tonight. So... So anyways, he's not letting me get on stage. It's like now we're 10 minutes late to get on stage because he and I are still arguing this. And um, I go down to the green room because he's like, I need to see your ID again. I'm like, fuck you. And I go down to the green room. And at this point, I'm like flustered. I'm crying. I'm upset because I'm like, what the fuck? Am I even going to get to play the show? The headliners are probably pissed because now everything's, you know, that's affected when the headliner can go on. The audience is upset because they've been waiting for a show. This guy follows me into my green room, comes (laughs) down there, and he's like, do you have your ID for me to check? Oh, my God, dude. It's like, are you kidding me? You need to check my ID again? So I get my ID out and I'm like, here's my ID. Can I get on stage and play the show? Because I'm just there to do my fucking job. Just like this guy is supposed to be doing his job, but he's targeting me. I show him my ID and he's like, I have to put wristbands on your wrist for you to get on stage. I was like, just put a fucking wristband on. Just put it on. And he puts it on and he's like walkie talking like she has complied to put the wristband on. Oh, man. Yeah. Right. So I get up. I get up on stage, and what's the first thing I do? I rip that fucking wristband (laughs) off, and I throw it to the audience, and I crank my fucking amp. And we played the most rock and roll show I've ever played. Yeah, and thankfully, there was a photographer and, like, a review there that night, and they were just, like, eating it up, like, snapping photos, and they did this, like, phenomenal review about our show that night. Oh, that's badass, so it worked (laughs) out. It worked out, but I got off that stage... And he was there. Where's your wristband? Asking oh, me that. Shit. What the <laughs> fuck, dude? I'm like, where's your boss? Right? Like, let okay, me, let me talk I got to into your boss. it with their boss. Yeah, I got into it with his boss too, because I was like, you know, I I caused a huge fucking scene that night. Yeah. I was like, you know what? When his boss showed up, I said, you know what's not fucking fair? The fact that he targeted me and harassed me all night, but nobody else that's playing tonight has had to have a wristband or X's on their fucking hands. And I walked out of that bitch and never saw them And it's not like you again. were underage or anything, which no. is weird as fuck. It, isn't that? He just didn't like that a woman confronted him That is like so that. crazy. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I don't play that fucking game. No, if any... Yeah. So if you're hearing, dude, fuck you. Yeah, no. 7th Street entry. <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. Yeah, no, I forgive you, but it's okay. But I probably won't play there again. <laughs> you ruined it, bro. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, next time you'll be playing the big room. Yeah, exactly. And you'll be- well, and my manager, Shyla, she was like, you know what, Liz? It's really sad for him because that's probably as much power as he's ever going to have. Yeah. And he felt like he needed to wield that over you. But you're a little man. Yeah. Can you're I just a little, little man? Can I just interject how much I love Shyla? <laughs> oh my gosh, we can interject all night. I love Shyla too. I got to hang out with her recently at. Um, I went to. Uh, uh, I saw uh, Will Hogue play at. At the open for social distortion. Oh my gosh! How was that show? Um, I mean, it was it was great. Uh, so my friend that I so a guy that used to play with me plays drums for Will. Oh shit! Alan Jones. Okay, cool. Uh, f- a fantastic drummer. Yeah, he I've lives, seen him play. Yeah, he lives in Nashville. He's yeah, amazing. He is. Uh, so Will is like a Nashville guy, and her manager manages Will as well, and yeah. Will's killing it. Um, yeah, he's doing well. He so, is. Um, but anyway, so I, I went to the show and, and, uh, and Shiloh was there and so we got to hang out. So it was fun. Cool. She's super fun. She's the best. I was, it was great because when I was, um, you know, when I first contacted you about doing the video, you were like, well, talk to my manager. 
and I had I've talked to I had talked to several managers about doing these videos, and Shiloh was like, I, finally I was like, like I'm ta- I'm talking to a real human being. Yeah, and, that's and, her. And, and 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 when I when I gave her the pitch of like what we were trying to do, she was like, oh, this sounds great. This is amazing. Like let's do this. You yeah. know. Whereas like, you know, I'm not gonna talk 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 about whose man whose manager I talked to, but I was talking to somebody else's manager, and they were just like, oh, you know, like. They just like didn't get it and they just wouldn't, you know, they just weren't being human about it, you know? Yeah. Um, so Shyla's, I, I, I love her. And- she's, she's so incredible. And it is primarily because of what you said. Like she's a human mm-hmm. who loves music, knows so much about music, is so good at her job, at being a manager, at managing a million things at one time, but also at just like being there for you. And, I think that's that's one of the best things about her is that she understands that if you're just focused on business, you might get somewhere, but you're going to be an asshole to a lot of people, <laughs> you know, and you're also not going to be probably very happy. But she gets that it's like a communal effort and she wants to be a part of that. And she makes so many efforts to make it as best as possible. So yeah, we were just talking today about that, about, you know, like a lot of different things just lining up and it's because of these great friendships and relationships that you make along the way. Well, a lot of performing is, uh, and even just being creative is a mind game. Yeah. And if your brain isn't where it needs to be, if, if you're like, you know, if you're in a tense situation, which actually it seemed to work out for your live show because you put that energy into the show. Yeah. But, I don't want to do that every night. But, but, but that's, that's different because you're in front of the crowd and you're, you're feeding off that. But what if, what if I pissed you off extremely badly? And then I said, then I put you in front of a, a quiet studio in front of a microphone. And now I'm like, all right. Yeah. Now, now, now perform. I'd crumble. Yeah. It just yeah. It fucks your brain up. It really yeah, does. You can't do it. You're right. And so. it's so much better when it's like, yeah, I'm just hanging out with friends. Like this isn't fucking it's the way it should be. Yeah, exactly. It's not a big fucking deal. It's like, I didn't get into this to work. Damn it. I get, <laughs> got into this to have fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're enjoying ourselves. Right? Exactly. I mean, that's part uh, of why we got into this, you know, whether it's music or film or whatever, yeah. it, you know, even podcasting. what, even Podcast. pi- podcasting, what we're doing now. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we got into it just to like hang out with our friends and like have a good time. That's and- it. Yeah, Exactly. If it takes off, it takes off. If not, you had a good night. So mm-hmm. yeah. that's how I feel about what I do. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, what about like, um, so, you know, as you, uh, when you tour around the States, I mean, are there like stops or other places that you come back and play that are just like cities or towns that are like really great to yeah. you for like what, uh, what cities or towns may that stick out to you as being So definitely Austin Mm -hmm. is a huge one because I don't know, right off the bat, there were just like people there who got what I was doing. And every time that I've been back, have come out to see me and brought more people. And they've always been excited about what it is that I'm doing. And the radio station there, Sun Radio, like backs me too. And um, that's just been really cool, you know, and like a city that you would never think you would even be at to be there and to have people there listening to you um but then also like on the west coast la wow shockingly (laughs) because it's such a big you know big monster but la is actually la is so appreciative i think of um of real music and i think la gets a bad rep from movies and Mm -hmm. tv shows and stuff of being a very fake town but uh that's just a very small portion that makes up that the rest of that city, which is very diverse. Um, Portland is a big one for me. Portland has liked me from day one. I love being in Portland. Yeah. I don't know why. It's got this like, I don't know, almost like a Memphis to Nashville, Portland to Seattle vibe. So it's got like a smaller city feel, but you still get all the like quirks of that like Northwest of Portlandia, you know yeah, what I mean? Kind of like Asheville, North Carolina. Exactly. Yeah, very similarly. So um, Portland's up there. It's a cool town. Uh, New York. Every time I go to New York, it's like I feel the energy there and yeah. people there um, react with me really well too. And oddly enough, this like really random town in Pennsylvania named Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Was he like a football player? (laughs) 
I think he was actually. I think Jim Thorpe was the first Native American football player. I, I knew. Why do you know I think that? you're right. <laughs> Why the fuck do you know that? Yeah, but you're freaking me out right now. <laughs> I, my my brain is like really weird. Like I, like it'll store just like like I can't tell you. Useless like, information. If you ask me what I did yesterday, I cannot tell you. But I but <laughs> but I can tell you that Jim Thorpe was a football player. Wow, yeah, man. he totally was. Yeah, uh, Jim. So there's there's a town called Jim Thorpe. Jim Thorpe. Wow. It's actually beautiful. It's wow. like in mountains in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And they have this crazy venue. I can't even remember the name of the venue we played there. It's like you're driving and you don't even think you're going to get anywhere. And suddenly you're at this venue and it's built to look kind of like a cabin, but it's huge. Oh, that's cool. Enormous on the inside. We played there with the psychedelic furs. Oh, and need, yeah. We need to talk about that. Yes, for sure. And, um, yeah, I just, the second I walked out on stage, they were like, "Woo!" freaking out, you know? So it was like that we had that vibe already from the second I got there and they really blew me away. So those are my four towns. How many shows did you do with the psychedelic furs? Mm, so we went out on tour with the psychedelic furs over the summer for, gosh, I can't remember if it was like two weeks ish something like that and then over fall we went back out for like a longer period it was like three and a half weeks wow Uh, yeah two different legs two different legs yeah totally we had the zombies in between oh wow yeah so what were what were like psychedelic first crowds like oh man so uh they were they were really interesting um some of them were really bizarre (laughs) Which is cool, which is totally fine. A lot of them are very artistic. Um, and I think Richard Butler, like, gains the respect from other artists, absolutely, because um, he's an artist in his own right on stage. And then also, like, physically, he's a painter. He's this phenomenal artist. I didn't know that. Incredible artwork. Like, when I saw I, – when one of his bandmates told me about – him being an artist i'm like is this like bob dylan being an artist where you see the drawings you're like my child could have done that you know without bob dylan i know (laughs) (laughs) and i love dylan but uh no it's like some high class fucking artwork that's cool like really nice like mind-boggling what he does um but yeah, and he's also very like theatrical, you know, and how he and how he's a front man, very unique in what he does. So his crowd appreciates that. And they want I think they want to see the psychedelic first audience wants to see stuff that's going to go against the grain. Mm-hmm. So they were super receptive to me. I made a lot of great new fans um, from both of those runs. Yeah, I, I feel like you playing with, um, you know, people like psychedelic furs and and um <clears throat> in the zombies you know those are like i feel like the older crowds are gonna be receptive like they're there uh, you know i mean they have an attention span yeah o- older people still have an attention span and, yeah and and so they like i'm sure they respond very well absolutely um now, what a, you also played with Blondie, right? Yeah, we did one show on the way to the Zombies yes. tour. I opened for Blondie, which is still, I can't even believe that that happened. Because it wasn't even just the show, it was the hang afterwards. It's always the hang, you know, you're in it you for the time? hang. Yeah, That's so awesome. like... What was this is probably the best story of all my tour stories. I okay. know this is this is horror stories, but no, 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 no. I'm about we're, to share the best story. We're just we're yeah. This is this is why we're <laughs> it, here. it could just be any tour story. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, when I opened for Blondie, it was in this um, in this place called the Kettle House Amphitheater in Bozeman, Montana, or not Bozeman, Missoula, Montana. Mm-hmm. And I got to play Montana earlier um, over the spring with Red Wanting Blue. And I just remember driving through Montana and being blown away by how fucking big the sky was, which is why they call it Big Sky. And just like the endless mountains and just how beautiful um, that entire state is. So I was actually pretty excited. Well, I was excited to be there to play with Blondie, but also to be in Montana. I had no idea what the crowd was going to be like or anything. It's almost built like 
a Red Rocks, but in Montana. Oh, cool. So if you can so envision it's an out- outdoor that. venue yes. in a natural setting, yes, amphitheater into in the mountains. No and way. I'm pretty sure there were bears and shit behind oh. us. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they, they love were, a good show. Yeah, they were telling us like the locals there were telling us what to do in case we saw them. Oh, There's no a, shit. a stream running through all this, all this really cool stuff. So, anyways, we pull up and um, Blondie and Debbie Harry, you know, fronting. Yeah. They're on stage and they're sound checking. And I'm just like, holy shit, I'm here right now. This is wild. Makes it real, right? (laughs) Yeah, it totally did. And um, so, yeah, so they get done and they all get shuttled off to where they need to go. And we check and, you know, we're just waiting for showtime. And showtime comes and we play our set in front of a, a packed amphitheater, which is phenomenal. And they responded incredibly well to us. And, uh, but then the best part is, you know, we get off stage and we get to watch Blondie play now. So, um, I'm on the side of the stage with, uh, with their, with their like tour manager, their manager and some, some people from the venue that are working there. And I'm on the side just watching the show and I'm watching, you know, and it's like, we're like 30, 45 minutes in, I need to go run to the restroom. So I run and I come back and I'm, I'm sitting down on one of the road cases and Debbie, um, gets done, gets done playing the song and it's a portion of their set where she comes off stage for a little bit and then she's going to go back on. So she comes off and she's talking to like their tour manager and she looks back and she sees me sitting there on the road case and she comes up to me and hugs me Aww. and kisses my face <laughs> and i'm like holy shit i'm freaking out she kissed him like she obviously knew who i was kissed my face and then went back out there to sing and i'm like what the fuck just went on and she all, passed her magic to you <laughs> all these people working at the venue immediately crowd around me they're like oh my gosh oh, she that's just awesome I'm crying. Their tour manager's like handing me a set list, you know, that oh they use God. that night, all this stuff. So I'm like, wow, this is like as good as it gets. Cause I used to listen to Blondie in high school and yeah. I used to wear this skirt religiously with Debbie Harry's face on it, like <laughs> oh on top of leggings. Like I thought I was so alternative with like checkered vans and stuff. And um, so, you know, it's like a huge shock to me. But so then they get done playing. And, you know, you give them their space. So they go to their, like, separate green rooms. Well, they put my fucking green room right next to Debbie Harry's green room, right? So we're just, we're all hanging out in my green, me and the boys in the trio, we're hanging out in my green room. And all of a sudden we hear at the door. And I'm like, all right, I open it. And it's Debbie fucking Harry. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) She's got her glass of wine. She's got her cigarette. And she's like, you know, I just, I want to tell you that I really enjoyed listening to you. And I really like your stuff and your oh, voice man. is, is really phenomenal. You remind me a lot of Pat Benatar. Oh, Holy shit. That's yeah. awesome. I was awesome. like, what? I'm like, thanks. Thanks for saying that. She's like, yeah, I really hope that we can do this again sometime. And I'm like, yeah, Sunny of course. Up. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'd love to do it again sometime. Of course, I'll have, yeah. I'll have my people call your people. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. I'm like, in, at this point, she's in pajamas, like she's not stage Debbie anymore. You know, she's trying to relax and chill. And yeah. I'm like, can I get a photo with you? I'm gonna be a total door <laughs> because I'm like, I don't know when this is gonna happen again. Yeah, totally. Can I please get a photo with you? She's like, yeah, sure. So we take a picture. We take a few pictures together, and she was just so nice and really cool and then apparently like we went and then we played the troubadour shows with the zombies which were two sold out nights and my booking agent um bruce solar who's a phenomenal guy like he used to book at a james and he he worked with the staple singers and, and gil scott heron and yeah just like anybody he was like, yeah, it's kind of a big deal that she approved you to be there because she doesn't approve That's a amazing. lot of females. Wow. So, uh, so I was like, I felt super honored. And it was just an incredible night and a great experience. I'm going to take to the tomb with me. That's that's amazing. <laughs> so yeah. you're, what, your booking agent used to book Etta James? He's no fucking joke. Get this. So... I was like, I was looking, so there were a few booking agents who were interested and he was the one that I really wanted to go with. Um, and the label was like, well, you know, if he's serious, then let's make him come to Memphis. Whoa. And 
sure enough, he came. He got on a plane and he flew to fucking Memphis from L.A. to have Holy dinner shit. here with us. That's awesome. To show like this wow. is how serious I am. I want to work with you, and I'm like, hell yeah, I want to work with you too. Did so. he pick up the bill too? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't remember because like, I sure did it. <laughs> did it fly to Memphis and be like, "Well, I got this too." It was me, him, and the label. So one of them. Oh, did. the labels only got it. <laughs> yeah, they had to. So man. It That's killer. Great. That's yeah. badass. It was pretty badass. Yeah. So you're just like floating on cloud nine at that moment. Oh, I'm still floating on cloud nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has it has it become real to you yet that your album's coming out in three days? No, it still hasn't. I think because I had the I had the finished product for so long, um, and I've been writing so many other things. You know, now it's like I've had to work towards like getting back into that mindset of right. the album. So. We're going to do like a live taping over at the Diddy studios of the record and <clears throat> at in the middle of next month. So, you know, they, they, they say that uh, when when a uh, when an artist like their uh, their first album comes out, uh, that's like 10 years of like, you know, the yeah. trying to get it done and, and you push that out. And then and then they're like that. Oh, that's great. Where's the next one? Yeah, exactly. So how, how was the how was the writing process for you? you Got to take the cap off, bro. Uh, how's the? I thought it was empty. How, <laughs> <laughs> Some good wine, isn't it? I'm having a good time. It is good wine. It's the chicken wine. It is. Good, I like man. it. Have y'all been to Art Bar yet? At the no. At the cross town. No, I want to go though. Yeah, it's a it's great. Like I love it because like the the aesthetic like in cross town. Yeah. It's this neat bar. But the, but they have a three dollar glass of wine and it's this. It's that. Yeah, and and like to to go to a That's bar, a good three dollar glass of and wine, and pay three bucks. I mean, it's not bad. Like, no, man. No, this chick- is good wine. They call it chicken on the win- on the menu. It's chicken wine. Yeah, you, it's was it's called la uh, la la vielle la vielle la vielle chicken wine chicken wine chicken wine. Hmm. But yeah, so like uh, you know the, these songs that are on this album, are these something that you've been working on for a long time, or is it something that you developed just for this? Um, well, I had been working, like, like I said, a few years previous to that, I think working up to that point because I didn't, I didn't start like playing guitar or writing until like much later in life. Cause I'd always just sang in bands or sang at church or whatever. So, um, so no, they weren't like specifically molded for this album, but by the time the time came to make the record. It was like, let's go through her catalog. And I had like over a hundred songs oh, already shit. written. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. So I was about to, my, my next question was, okay, so the next time around when you need to come up with another 10 to 15 songs, Oh no, I got, no, you I got, got so, many so, albums that's since awesome. then. Cause all year, I mean, Shyla and I counted how many songs this last year while I was touring that I had written. And it's something like 52 new wow. songs, wow. which is Holy. about one a week, wow. but I'm not home every week. That's so, crazy. Yeah, so it's usually like they like I always say they come in threes. So I'll be home for like a week or two, and I'll get three knocked out like one after another. So, so. let's so explain to me like um like so you have these songs and, and they're in uh, certain levels of of, of doneness. Yeah. Uh, so what, how how does a producer work with that? Yeah. So um, it's the demos, and then um like for example, this song that we just I just did with Pat Sansone um. I, I sent him the demo, which is actually, it's got me playing drums and bass and guitar oh, so you do and it all. vocals. Yeah. On the demos I will. And then, um, and then they listen to it and, you know, I really think that the, the producer comes in to be like another band member at the end really? of the day. So I just, I trust them to make the call of what they think it should, um, ultimately big picture look like because, you know, if I'm going to you as a producer, then there's something that you can bring to the table that I can't. Right. right. So. Um, so, yeah, the, it usually morphs, but it doesn't stray too far from the demo version. So, That's cool. yeah, it's been really cool. So, yeah, I just I'm basically a recluse who spends a lot of hours like working on demos that's good though that, <laughs> it that's, is good that, that, and that, that's how, it gives that's me how a you leg up crap. you know you gotta do the 10,000 hours thing right well I figured if the more that I write the, the higher my chances are of getting good songs yeah, out of me that's right so yeah I mean, I'm sure you're going to need a music video for your new album. Mm-hmm. I know some people. Yeah, you, know, you have to be sitting at the I table will. with some people. 
I'm sure. I'm sure Wahid is trying. Oh, Wahid is in there. <laughs> did, but, hey, wait, wait, hold on a minute. But did Wahid shoot it in at that? Oh, wait, hold on a minute. <laughs> Wahid's, Wahid's trying to get in. I yeah. love Wahid. God I love, bless him. I we love, love you, Wahid. We yes, do. We do. We love you. A lot. I love Wahid. <laughs> but really, I mean, do you have do you have a video planned or no? Um, you have a single? Is there like one of? The, is oh, there one song that's a single? No, I have, I have two not. favorites on the album. Okay, I want to hear these. I don't know the names because the uh, they didn't. Uh, it's what I didn't like about the uh, where they play the album. Oh and you, yeah, and you just don't kept know. Going. All right, so it's the, the there's a slowy kind of ballady one that kind of. So. Yeah, is it Cold Baby? <sighs> You have, Tell that's the, me Lou. That's the yes, one you have a video it. for. There's already a oh, video. Oh, damn it. And Next. then Okay, and then the one that is the first one on the EP, but it's also, I think it's number two on Body the album. Body of Mine. That dun, song dun, gets dun, stuck dun, in my head. That's what I think the next video should be, I right? agree with okay. you, because that, yeah. one, uh, that one has like a... It's a riff. It, yeah, and, and oh, it, but also the uh, the chorus is super catchy. And Someday, then, yeah. I'm gonna rest this body. Yeah, dude, and yeah. it's got that kind of head bop thing going to it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but in, in, in one of the reviews I read of your album, uh, it said that uh, you, you kind of like, um, it feels like it could be like the James Bond opening. Like, Man, I love <laughs> that. I, I, I was like, I was like that. I totally see that right? because it, it, it feels. We need it, to keep talking about this. It comes up on their like, on no, their but like it, 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 yeah, it's, it's be, and I, I see that because like all the James Bond songs, they kind of start slow and, yeah. and then it has this really big build and yeah. it, like, it's really, yeah, you totally have the sound for that. And I try, I mean, my favorite, I don't know. I don't know if they're my favorite songs, but I think the way that I write is, or I try to write in like a very cinematic way because I want there to be room for other people artistically to come in. But that song, especially I'm like, and yeah. I, I uh, also noticed that, that the song that we did with you, um, uh, come my way, mm-hmm. you did it like twice as fast live. Wasn't I, it so I, fast? And I love that. <laughs> So and, and fast, I said, I'd, right? never, I'd never heard it's the song. It's hard to go back. I'd never heard the song, and then when I went back and listened to it on the album, we I was like, so "This excited. is." I was like, "This is so slow," <laughs> but, but I, I liked it because it had harmonies and and, yeah. and and there even like a keyboard and stuff in it. Yeah. It's not that's not in the one we did. Yeah, but yeah, I was like, "Wow, this is crazy." So it's, it's interesting to see. I don't know if it was like the rain that was coming through the roof that was getting on all our shit that was and, like, <laughs> "We need to do this now." You know, but it feels good that that yeah. fast. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of my biggest regrets about that video is not. Not catching the water in the bucket. No, we did. That were coming. <laughs> yeah, I know, but like I didn't. It's Put not it in the. the it's not in the cut. Uh, I, sh- I, sh- I shot that. I remember. Sh- right, right. It's not in the cut. Dang. But like, I, but why didn't we put that in there? I don't, I'll, I'll I don't know. Give it back. I'll, okay. I'll you know, it was a lot. There was a. Lot. There was You're, 13 videos to that's yeah. edit, you know. You so. are right on that. Like, when we play it live, it's fast. But it's cool. It yeah. works fast. It does work. Yeah, yeah it lends itself to that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. Like they'll just morph. In that way, like when the energy's there, it just changes the tempo of the song totally. Yeah. Like, last time I saw the Smashing Pumpkins, they played all their old songs just like double time. Wow. Like, like, and, really? I, and I was like, I was like, he's just doing this just to get through it. <laughs> no. no, it's just the you know excitement of of playing live and yeah, and- yeah exactly. And I'm I don't like like you know clicks i don't like fucking setting tempos and like saying it has to be like this it's like obviously if you're if you're doing vocal phrasing it needs to be somewhere where you can fit that in right and you can you all have to be able to play it but to me a live show is a live show it's a different monster than the studio and it should sound different yeah it should so but, but you're feeding off energy do you like to um uh, like b- have played a song like taken a song on tour before you record it um or if you had that luxury i have uh i did before we recorded this record thankfully i mean there's a few songs like on that ep feel something we've never played live which it's is like song. yeah it's like the most played song that i have out there and it's like we're gonna have to start playing it now because mm. people are listening to it but um no i didn't get to experiment with that one but but other songs that aren't even on either the ep or the record i've gotten to take out live and see how people respond with which has been cool is that a learning curve like learn like so when, once you have your your idea you go through the the process of recording it and then you're like okay now we have to figure out how to play it the way that we record it live well uh i always approach it differently i'm like you know yeah we recorded it this way live and this is the general form but um i always think that you should you should work with the strengths of your band 
Right. So it's what? like, if I don't have another three vocal parts to be there, then well, that, I, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Cause you, cause you do these really cool harmonies yeah. and I can tell that it's you doing your own harmonies. Yeah. So I didn't know if you actually brought in people to come no, out and sing with you. No. So then it just becomes like a more, stri- a more stripped down raw right. setting like that, like come my way that you guys recorded. Yeah. It's like a much more raw in your face recording, which is cool. You know, no, it's a neat version. Yeah. 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 I love having those variations. And that was neat doing that in Isaac Hayes' old oh house. Oh my We gosh. made it look super sexy. How cool is that? Yeah, it, the, the freaking lights. Yeah. It's spinning around. It's really cool. Oh, so the sunken <laughs> living room. Yeah. So what's in there? What's in that house right now? So my friend, space. it's my friend's studio. Um, and he plays in a few bands around town. He's a drummer. And, um, but he, he's also an engineer. Do I and, know him? Uh, his name's Lee Sammons. Um, he plays for, um, He's in a band called, well, he plays drums for Los Cantadores. Los Cantadores. And he uh, and he plays drums for a band called On and On, which is like a, it's like a perverted, it's like, like a sex rock. It's like sex rock. Like every song is like <laughs> dirty and like. What? It's, it's, Where are they playing play, that? They, they, they play. It's like they, a song. It's like rim jobs. Oh I'm yeah, yeah. Spread oh, your was, booty wide. Yeah. I I covered this. I, <laughs> I covered this up when we did the the, the uh, when we recorded there, but there, my oh God. my band would practice there, and we and their set list is on the wall, and just oh, so we, and that. we it's would crazy. laugh, we would just laugh at their set list. I totally names. took a picture of that because it's crazy. Their their song yeah. titles are oh ridiculous. Gosh. So it's like I call it, I call it fuck rock. And like, when did they play next? Rock. Yeah, so I've called, never even heard of. Them. Oh, you should. They're good. they're called on and on. Um, but I mean, Lee's uh, he's a great drummer. I mean, he's played with Jimbo Mathis, and he plays. Uh, yeah, you know, he's, I love uh, Jimbo. That's who you should do a video on. Oh, really? Next oh. time. Yeah, yeah, we'd be down, and we need to get him in for a podcast. Yes, we should, both. Yeah. He was my neighbor. We're for a trying while. to like do some recordings together. Oh, oh nice. that'd be badass. Me, him, and Jack Oblivion. Oh, oh that no, would be that'd incredible. be fucking awesome. Yeah, I need to. We need <laughs> right? to get both of them we, on. Yeah, you do. But yeah. Jim, Jimbo was my neighbor. He lived two doors down from me for years. Oh, cool. So, I love Jimbo. Yeah, he's the best. And then, and I mean, Squirrel Nut Zippers are going on a, on tour now. Yeah, so, like yeah. he's reviving that yes he is it's a good time to come on the podcast i know bring him on he'll come we'll get him him. (laughs) jimbo you're next well i just you know i mean the whole the whole like point of this is like i mean every time like i i was musician and every time i get with other musicians we just end up like sharing these like tour stories you know and just like yeah you either have like you have the best night of your life and you have the worst night of your life (laughs) and and it's all and and you never know the beauty of it is like you never know what each day is gonna bring no you don't you 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 know you go into (laughs) it and like it's it's either gonna be the best night of your life or the worst night of your life but it's all yeah it's an adventure that's what I love but either way you still gotta play the show yeah you do it's super cool you have to do your job yeah it's super cool (laughs) and um and uh, you know I I miss it I wish I could do it again oh you will do it I'm a little old nah nah Come on, that well, beard we'll, look, has we'll, musician written all over it. Look, eventually, we'll be taking this show on the road, yeah, and we'll have okay. our own tour story. That's true. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I would love to. I need to. So, um, let's see. Uh, anything? How, how can people get in touch with you and and you know ca- catch your um, shit? Hopefully, they don't. No, I'm just kidding. Oh wow. Uh, okay, so she does. <laughs> okay, do not contact Liz Brazier. No stalkers. No, no, no. <laughs> Just LizBrazier.com, and that's Brazier, B-R-A-S-H-E-R. You said Brazier. Is it Brazier or Brazier? Uh, whatever you want to say. No, as no, long as, no, as, no, long no. as it's not Brasher, I'm yeah, okay. But what is, Brazier. But what, it's Brazier. Mm-hmm. Brazier. Oh, okay. Brazier. Like Brandon Fraser, but Brazier. Yeah, like Fraser, but Brazier. Oh, okay. That's okay. interesting. Brazier. It could be Brazier, too. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, LizBrazier.com or uh, you can find my stuff at Fat Possum. And you're on Twitter? Yeah, my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'm out there. Um, what about, what about, have you had any, do you have any stalker stories? Have you had oh any my stalkers? gosh, yes. Do yes, you really? Please. That's yeah, a- that's why I said, please do not <laughs> so get in why, contact that's, that's with a- me. <laughs> that's, yes. Let's have it. That's why I, I appear to be such a strange human being. Can, can, uh, can, can you tell us one? Let's see. I could tell you one. Please. Um, so, uh, I was living, like I said, in a suburb of Atlanta 
And there was this guy who would show up at my gym and would work out on the machine right next to me, even if there were multiple other machines right. available. And he was consistently doing this. And one day I look in my rear view mirror and he's following me home. No oh, shit. shit. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and it turns out this psychopath actually knew who I was, um, from like the internet or whatever and which is such a scary world but uh yeah he was trying to follow me home to find my address whoa and so i detoured in a lot of different directions to try to lose him um and long story short it ended up in me having to file a restraining order um this guy was obsessed wow and oddly enough his wife was also his obsessed wife. with me yeah, it got really weird. So there had to be a restraining order against the both of them. And hopefully I don't see them anymore. And then my next my next story happened in Arkansas. My next stalker. I have many stalkers, <laughs> actually. Yeah, Where? it's it's really scary, like, being a woman and doing it because, got, like, creepy, weird guys know where you're at at yeah. all times. Well, yeah. It's kind of like you're like, okay, well, Saturday night, I'm going to be down at the, you know. You, yeah, you like, have to do this, that. This is where I'm going to be at right? this time. So then people are always like, I don't know if they're like caught off guard by like how like standoffish I can be, but it's like, I really don't know who you are, you right. know? So the, there's a lot of times where I'll have weird interactions with people and I just won't come out at all because it's, it's so weird and I don't want to deal with those people yeah. again. But, um, but yeah, there's this one particular guy in Little Rock, of all places, who uh, he was just convinced that I was going to marry him. Oh, wow. And he kept trying to hold my hand after oh my the show God. and like do all this stuff. And we were like, no, man, you need to back up. And he wouldn't back up. And he was like, I'm taking you to my hotel room tonight. Oh, and the guys shit. in my van were like, no, you're fucking not. They, <laughs> they threw me in the van and locked the doors. And this guy's still trying to Holy get shit. in. Yeah, it got to the point where like they had to kick him out. Take and, a clue, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of a lot of weirdos out there, but for every weirdo, there's like, you know, a hundred cool people. So Right. Wow, there's a lot of weirdos out there. No, yeah. I mean I mean I know, you know, like so I'm I'm friends with Amy Levere and yeah. she, there was a guy there was a guy here that was like stalking her and, mm -hmm. and posting crazy shit on the internet and like he even like you know, he he friended me on Facebook just because he, her, and I were friends, and and like, um, and then just seeing his, you know, he obviously was mentally ill, yeah, and just like seeing his posts and and you know, like seeing like what she went through and and just like it's it's hard, yeah, it's and um, I hate that for her, yeah, and and you know, it's um, you know, it's something that we don't have to deal with no. Like, no especially like having the internet this may be like mm. too much info out there but there's so many times where i've had i've had like messages pop up and notifications and it's guys that i don't know so i have to be like okay guy that i do know like bandmates or anybody who's around me that i know and that i trust please can you look at this first mm -hmm. because so many guys will send inappropriate inappropriate photos people lead with that it's just like oh hey here yeah you go. it's like here you go i don't know you but here's a pic of my dick it's like nobody that wants ever work? that does that ever work no it, it never works but it's so like it's so traumatizing to the per to the woman opening that it's like mm. so jacked up that you're like what the fuck you think i'm so useless that i'm gonna respond to this image like, of you thank you and they, yeah. need, yeah. they need they need to like teach this in school like this needs to be part of it the does. curriculum wants to see you. It does. Like, like this never works never never do this never do this ever the it's disturbing opposite of this works yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> So Touché. yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, um, it's just it's a con it's a daily yeah filtering through the weirdo. And I'm sure that you know, like the you know, the more success that you get, the it's hard to imagine the more people, dick pics you'll get. It's hard to imagine. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, it's hard to imagine like people that have like you know a a a degree of like fame and like what they like have to go through. Oh my gosh! Yeah, like. 
I don't even remember who it was or who she was because I didn't keep up with like any of those like singing competition shows. But don't you guys remember it wasn't too long ago that one of those girls got like stabbed at a Florida nightclub, like some crazy oh. stalker came yeah, to see her. Uh, killed her, didn't he? Yeah, he killed yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, like he just died. came out and stalking her, like it, it snuck into the yeah. into the venue, and she was doing a meet and greet. Yes, and he came up and killed, killed her. Killed her, straight up yeah. killed her. What the hell? That's oh my God. crazy. That's insane. And and like and that's all because like you know he, he knew where she was. Yeah, and I know that's why I'm like. And he I'm was not he was able around. to get through security and snuck in to backstage and got back there and was like waiting in a line where she was doing a meet and greet and signing things, and he got up there and like you know. Listen, y'all, that's why I started doing kickboxing, mm-hmm. Muay Thai, because mm-hmm. I'm like, fuck that. If somebody pulls out something on me, I better know how to kick the shit out of a dude yeah. right now. For sure. For <laughs> sure. defend myself, because you never know. Sometimes you're by yourself. Have, yeah. you, have you seen the documentary, I Think We're Alone Now, about the guy who was obsessed with Tiffany? No. <laughs> oh, it's f- it's fascinating. Tiffany. Who's Tiffany? Tiffany the, from the eighties. I think we're alone oh, now. No, I haven't seen it. Oh, it's fascinating. I was literally when you said I think we're alone now. I sang that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so this guy was fascinated with her, and and um and it's almost like um it's so funny because she, I mean, because she's in her forties now, and um and you know she st- still plays, and and but he's almost like this. You know, I, I mean, he's to he's to a degree. It's like it's creepy, but it's almost like she's accepted him as like part of her life. It's wow. like he's like I'm I'm the Tiffany fan club, and like what <laughs> you know, anywhere she is, he'll show up, and wow. and it's almost like that's just this like. Part How of do her people life. have money to do that? Because you can't have a job full time stalking someone. That's always my question. Well, it's like, you know, it depends on what your job is. Do you are you collecting disability and then do it? You know what I'm Yeah, that's yeah. another good point, but it takes a lot of money to yeah. go and follow these people everywhere in the world. Right. And stalk them. I always wondered how people like it, like back in the day they said they would follow the Grateful Dead around. Like how the hell do these people like do? That? I know. Oh, that was a whole. But that was a That's whole. That's like thing. a caravan that they traveled with, yeah. wasn't it? Though. No, I went to. Um, so the Grateful Dead played here in '94. Jerry Garcia died in '96, and um, so they played here in '94, and um, and 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 it was people. It was crazy. I mean, they played at the pyramid. <laughs> I oh my gosh, the pyramid, the Bass Pro Shop. Yeah, pyramid? the Bass, played at the Pro, Bass Shop? Pro Shop. What? They played at the damn Bass so they Pro played Shop. At, they played at the pyramid, and and it was crazy because like all the uh, you know all the police just the police just stood back and like let it let whatever happen. But you know the, gra- the Grateful Dead parking lot were very so so you walk through, and I mean I you know earlier that day. I didn't go. I didn't care about the music. I had friends that were like super hippies and they were really into it. And at the time I was just this like punk rocker, but I was like really into the drugs and what I didn't yeah. care. But I had been at the Overton Park earlier and some kid just like poured liquid acid in my hand. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, I, so I'm on so another tripping balls. I'm on another planet. <laughs> you're at a pyramid in like, Memphis. I'm yeah. going to the pyramid. So I'm like walking around the pyramid and, and just the parking lot. I mean, people would travel with them and like, you know, people were like selling drugs and people were. So sell- I mean, I like that. Like, I remember like buying a grilled cheese sandwich from some kid who had it. <laughs> Like out of their trunk, they had a, like a Foreman st- grill, a stove, <laughs> <laughs> and I was just so fucked up. I'm like, I will eat this grilled cheese sandwich out of this kid's wow. trunk. Hey, you know? a grilled wow. cheese sandwich is a grilled cheese sandwich. Yeah, bro. yeah. Like, how uh, can you fuck that up? Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, that was like, you know, like that. So when people followed the dead, it was like there was there's a whole there was a whole like um, economy, Holy shit. you know, going on yeah. an underground economy of like drugs and food. I and, want to do a documentary on with those people after like Jerry oh. Garcia died and what they did well I mean, right now know, what did they do maybe yeah. i mean a lot of may you know some of them like followed fish which that's true I'm sorry. Like, the string like, cheese the, incident <laughs> like trey anastasio Wide, is our new god widespread <laughs> widespread that's right yeah, I, yeah. i've seen some which is like shows. you know as 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 an adult like as a kid i didn't appreciate the grateful dead and now as an adult i hear some of that some of that stuff that like my friends listen to and i'm like okay like I like I, I kind of get this, you know, <laughs> but I never get fish or widespread. No, like, I've I, never I've gone. Never, any yeah. of what's those the Jim things. Jones one? The mountain or the what? 
The Jim Jones. Yeah, uh, or, or no, that's not it's him. Jim Jim James. Oh, uh, um, my morning jacket. My morning jacket. Yeah, that 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 yep. has a whole like culture behind it. The oh. first Bob Dylan show that I ever saw was My Morning Jacket, Wilco, and Bob Dylan. That's a wow. badass show. It was supposed to be. Oh. But it was in a random soccer stadium outside of Chicago. Oh, that's weird. It was really weird, and then uh, I. I got to meet Pat Sansone and become friends with him and Wilco later. And he was like, yeah, they build that. They, they sold that to us. Like it was going to be a rolling thunder review and we were all going to jam together on stage and do all right. this stuff. Um, but it was not that. So, so it was like, we had to drive super far outside of the city to be in a soccer stadium, this huge soccer stadium to watch like these little like tiny men <laughs> play on stage. Yeah, that's weird when they do it, arenas and stuff like it that. It was, that. yeah. But, but then uh, but then I saw Dylan in a smaller stadium. But how was, was better. yeah, I mean, I, I My saw. My morning jacket was great. Wilco were great it too. Was, they both jam beyond their yeah. songs, which is super I badass. I don't know anything about My Morning Jacket. You, you, you would dig it. Well, I always heard the name and I always like thought it was like a, like, like e- a death cap for cutie. Like an emo That's band. what I always thought. So but I never not. listened to them because I'm like, I've already been through that fucking phase. But no, they're man. not They're like, they're like hippy dippy. They're like, you know, the people out there trying and acid and they're like feeding the trip whoa 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 oh. whoa and they're doing all these weird soundscapes and like dudes like singing all these it's it's amazing yeah jim, oh. J- jim james jim james that's his name super cool life doesn't he have like solo stuff out too i, I think. don't know i think he does yeah he's they're good you'd like them <coughs> but i guess i guess to see dylan in like 96 at mud island and that was that was what at yeah. mud island I saw him at the orphan yeah mud island oh, ago. wow yeah. I saw him at the Fox Theater in Atlanta, and that was pretty fucking phenomenal. You couldn't have cell phones out, so they had all these like elderly people with signs going around saying no cell phones. Yeah, no they cell do phone. that. Whoa, was it? Was he playing his style? Because the when I saw him, he was mm-hmm. playing, he was playing like this like forties and fifties kind of style. It was the new jazz. It was like he was like he was like he's like this is the kind of music that my father used to listen yes. to. What? And so Get, he, he, yeah. he even played he played like things, songs like Hurricane and stuff, but in that style. Yes. Oh yeah. Shit. And he's covering Frank Sinatra. Yes, he was. Oh, it was shit. a lot of Frank Sinatra yes. stuff. Yes, it's it was the amazing. Shadows in the Night album yeah. that he came out with. So that that's the tour I saw. But that's my my favorite Dylan album is the one that Hurricane's on Desire. Oh, Desire is mine too. <laughs> Dude, yes, yes. That whole era of oh, yeah. Dylan. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, actually, but like after, like right after that, it, he he went off the rails. And yeah. Like, and like, I don't care for it. I'm yeah, yeah. And like, and like, <laughs> right after that, like, Saved came out, yeah. and and it's like, yeah. you Infidels. know, yeah. Um, but but um, but Desire is like so fucking good. And it's a like like one of my one of the things I love about the record is the is like there's just these like flaw like these these flubs that are yeah. on the record where oh, yeah. you know it's uh Emmy Lou Harris is doing the the backup vocals and and they I love her and yeah. they do and I played a show with her no oh, shit what? get out of here <laughs> oh my god yeah right. I know I know right it was it was pretty phenomenal oh my god at Third Man Records Jack oh, White shit. Uh, oh, was he there? That's amazing. He was not there. He no, was. no. But we did this. It was me, her, and Mary Gaucher, and we just did a in the round together. And it was all like oh, we talked wow. about yeah, stripped yeah. down, just yeah, me on an that. acoustic, and it was us three together, and uh, and we just we were we were there to um, to honestly to support like. A, a politician. Oh, who I could saw hopefully this. change. It was, like a, it, was, it was like a rally, <laughs> sort yes. of something like that. I saw that. James Macklin. Okay. So, um, thanks. Um, so, yeah. I I don't know. She was awesome. Did you have you seen? Do you know the story at um, going back to Sam Phillips Studio? There's the room. There's a room in Sam Phillips Studio. And there's a couch there that Jack White reupholstered. Do you know about this? Yeah. I Wait, do. really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That couch in the. It's like the only thing in there. It's this long room, and and the walls are white, and the and the and there's these lights that change color, and there's this one red couch at yeah. the end of the room. Okay. Yeah. He and, reupholstered. That. Yeah. Jack. No he's, he's into that. 
But, it, you know, and when he gave him the couch, he's like, I hid something in that. And what he it, does that. To yeah. all Because he used to work in reupholstery before he was like That's Jack White insane. from the White Stripes. And he would hide his demo tapes in all the yeah. uh, <laughs> all the couches. That's so there's a record cool. hidden in this couch at Sam Film Studio. Yeah. But what's interesting about Jack White and going back to like we talked about, you know, I said something earlier about how like. You know, everything cool is sort of rooted in Memphis, you yeah. know. Um, there was that big explode. you know, the the thing that, the, like, the White Stripes were doing was really, like, what the, they were trying to do what the Oblivions were doing. That's So he loves Jack Oblivion. Do mm-hmm. you know that he gave Jack Oblivion a red guitar? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, he gave him we a guitar. We need to get Jack on, we Jack need- Oblivion. <laughs> Yeah, Jack and then Jack White. Yes. Oh, That's how well. this podcast is going to go next. Okay. That'd be but, badass. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? Like, you know, no, sure. he, he gave him a guitar and apparently was is a huge fan. Yeah. So, yeah, th- I mean, there was that whole, that. that whole, like, garage explosion um, that happened, you know, the Oblivions. And, and it's crazy that, like, they don't have the... It's like they don't have the recognition. The other, these other bands sort of cashed in. Not to take any anything away from Jack White because, like, dude is super talented. I wasn't a huge Jack White fan, and I and I saw that. Um, I watched that documentary on uh, the White Stripes, it, like yes. that last tour they yeah. did. I thought you might it might get loud. That's what oh, I that was, was a good one too. It yeah. was fan. It was amazing, and 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 I realized like how talented he is, and like what you know that he's just one. He you know he he's like. He's a cloud person like us. Like yeah. We're, yeah. we're cloud people, and we and we just like live in this like cloud yeah. world. And we're just Absolutely. like insanely like always trying to like create and make stuff yeah. and like, whatever you know. And 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 that's why what I took from that watching that documentary. Well, I didn't get into Jack White and that whole world actually until his first uh, or his second solo album, Lazaretto. That came out because I was like, okay, the White Stripes, and I knew their hits and stuff, but it wasn't anything that I felt like I needed to like dig deep into or anything for some reason. I don't know. Right. And then Lazaretto was like this crazy record that had him bringing in all these different types of musicians. So you had like a very groove oriented drummer and you had Lily May on fiddle oh, man. and you know what I mean? And, and you have Dominic on, on upright bass and playing some other stuff and just all these like different sounds and just like the aesthetic that he's always done is so cool. Like to go from red and white and black stripes to then go from totally blue and everything's chrome. So all your musicians are playing on chrome instruments. Yeah, I know. Right. Right. And you've got this, you know, he's Jack white, the third. So he's got these like three stripes (laughs) on everything. Just, Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So his live shows became this, this huge, like artistic event. I don't know. And that's when I really got into him and I'm like, Damn, he's so cool. He's he he's definitely like it just uh, you can just tell like watching that docu- watching that documentary you can tell it's just like he he's his mind is a million miles yeah, an hour. It really is. And and when you walk into Third Man Studios, you see the way everything is decorated and you're like this is fucking Jack White's place. It's like you oh, just walk crazy. in and so you can see that. I had no idea they did it. He did upholstery. Oh yeah, yeah. That's super cool, yeah. man. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I'm a firm believer that uh, as as an artist, you got to do something with your hands. Yeah, and uh, I, I actually learned to do cobbling. I, I cobbled for a few years. Really? Uh, Did you learn oh. from uh, Guy, Venable. Guy Venable? Yeah, from Brian Venable's dad. Wow, uh, is that the Memphis cobbler that we all should know? Well, uh, Brian, Brian Brian Venable Venable's, plays for Lucero. He's the guitar player Lucero. Okay, and his dad is a, is an old Bill Street blues man. Uh, and, uh, so I, I met him, I used to play shows on Bill street and I met him through this wow. British, through this British bass player. And then I, and I was telling <laughs> him, and I was, te- and I was telling him that I, you know, I'm, I'm a filmmaker now and I, I don't play music much anymore, but I'm, I'm recording podcasts and doing stuff. And, and I came over and I started recording his, uh, his, uh, like, uh, band, like, rec- uh, practice sessions. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I was like, I was like, you know, I, I said, uh, freelance gigging, uh, is, is kind of hard. I'm not making a lot of money. And he said, he said, come over, I'm going to show you how to do something where you can go anywhere in the world and there's going to be a shoe shop where somebody is behind and you can go in and say, look, I'll come in and I'll put heels on for you today and I'll, I'll shine all your shoes. And he's like, he's like, he's like, I'll teach you a trade that you can go any city in the wow. world and, and you'll be able to get work. 
That's so necessary. So I, and, I, and I also had to, so, and I was like, well, cool. I had to take the most hipster job I could find. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Oh you my gosh. Awesome. Moved to Brooklyn and. <laughs> but no, it's cool. So and, and, it, and put shine on beards. No, yes. if, and if, if, if I had to, I, I, I could totally like, you know, go in and stitch handbags and, and, and put heels on wow. and, and, and do that if, if I had to. Damn. It's got to fall back on something. Tr- a man do, needs yeah, a trade. That's true. You do got to fall back on stuff. That's amazing. That's true. Cobbler. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Change the vibe of the room. I got it. <laughs> I bet. I bet Guy Venable has some stories we're gonna get. Oh, uh, we're, we're gonna bring him in. He's yeah. gonna come in and do it. And yeah. His son as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. You guys should get the Lucero dude. And- yeah, oh, for sure. For sure. It's it's cool. It's been cool to like see and Matt them. Ross Bang too. Oh, oh man, yeah. yeah. But it's been it's cool to see the you know um, Ben and Brian and Lucera like because I saw them in like '98. Yeah. And like playing to a room with like nobody. Oh my god! And now that you know, now wow. they've, they've they were at Red Rocks. Yeah, they've year. like built a no, thing, and it's beyond all of that. They are on Walt Junior's wall in Breaking Bad. Oh, Walt oh, Jr. Shit. has a Lucero poster on his wall oh, in Breaking Bad. Yeah, that's, that's top tier. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna. That's be able that's to top some it. production designer yeah. going like here. Might as well quit right now. We gotta put this up. <laughs> that's yeah. badass, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, I like seeing Memphis people kill it. For sure. Hell yeah. Speaking of kill it, like let's kill it. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I think we did good. Done. So cool. we're, we're, we we broke two hours. We're at two hours and nine minutes. Oh, my oh shit! Gosh. I'm done. Y'all, I could well, talk uh, all day, all night. <laughs> okay, Liz. Well, I mean, we've had we've enjoyed having you on. Like, we're uh, yet, let, yet again, where can people uh, reach out and find you? Let's go ahead and wrap this up for today. LizBrazier.com. It's B R A S H E R. And don't contact her on Twitter or Facebook <laughs> or Instagram. Creepy dudes. <laughs> well, awesome. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. You've been listening to the Tour Stories Podcast. For more, check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Tour Stories.